Good morning, everybody. Medal Championship Sunday for gold here at the third annual Dalray Beach Pickleball Open presented by Baptist Health and Palm Beach County Sports Commission. Thanks for tuning in here on Inside World Pickleball, streaming live here on YouTube. We are at the Delray Tennis Stadium, Delray Beach Tennis and Pickleball Center. This event hosted by the Foster Events Group, the Delray Beach Pickleball and Tennis Center, three championship courts here, 27 courts on the grounds of the world-famous home of the ATP Delray Beach Tennis Tour Open. And what a job here. It has been a beautiful venue. Carl Foster and his group putting on another sensational event here at the third annual Delray Beach Pickleball Open. Expect big crowds here today. Terrific vendors. If you're in the area, come on out. We've got plenty of wonderful seats, including 6,000 seats in the stadium, 1,000 box seats and VIP covered seats and veranda. And Trish Stewart about to get us going here. We will lead off the day with men's pro singles. John Cangelosi against Will Howells. These two faced off in the main bracket earlier in the tournament. Howells took the first 11 to 7, and then Cangelosi came back winning 11 to 11 to 6. Cangelosi cruising to the final. It was Howells coming through the back with a 15-13 victory over Bardol. And then he did get the withdrawal from um, Eden Lika, who unfortunately had to pull out. So a little bit of rematch here. Interesting stories, both of these players. Will Howells, this is his first pro tournament. I mean, amazing. This uh, former Notre Dame fighting Irish tennis star taking on John Cangelosi, the lefty, and he will serve it. First point to Cangelosi. Cangelosi, an interesting background as well. His background from ice hockey, played at Connecticut College and decided to walk on as a tennis player there as well. Two-sport collegiate star. Terrific anticipation by Howells, but left that a little wide. Will thought that got line. It was very close. Trish Stewart not going to get involved. She'll stay with the call. I think Cangelosi's offering him the ball here. He's going to give it to him. How about that for sportsmanship? Cangelosi insisting that Howells take the ball. He th Will was adamant that it was good. Cangelosi saw it out. Don't see that every day. And Cangelosi will get that ball right back. John Cangelosi serving at 1-0. Good scoop volley, but can't get to that one as Cangelosi stays down that line with a pass. Sharp beginning for the southpaw. The golden boy, Scott Golden, will be jumping on in a moment with us. The return is deep. So a nice start for the confident-looking John Cangelosi as Howells Goes to the towel, like to bring in Scott Golden, pro pickleball player. Great to have you, Scott. Hey, great to be here. And a timeout by Howell. Strong start by the left-hander, Cangelosi, Scott. Cangelosi won the first meeting in three against Howells. You wonder how, what the confidence factor is here in the final. Well, I spoke to John before this match kicked off uh, just briefly. He was preparing for this matchup, and he sa I said, you've already played him once. Um, how'd you feel? And he said he felt good. He, he won it in three, but he looked at me and he said, you know, it's hard to beat the same opponent twice in one tournament. So he was a little nervous going into that, um, unsure about his chances of winning twice, but looks like he settled in nicely here early in the match.
So Cangelosi, interesting background, Scott, with his hockey, and he was telling me that that ho it feels like the hockey really felt with his explosiveness around the court. Well, if you follow pro pickleball, A.J. Kohler was a hockey player, so there seems to be a trend of hockey players coming over with good hand-eye coordination and just gritty players. Oh, look at that speed. That's an example of the explosiveness. And Akangelosi also with a tennis background, and, of course, that, that assists his ability. Yeah, and Will Howell's actually from a big tennis background as well, uh, played at Notre Dame. Uh, went to school there at Notre Dame, and he's also an Eagle Scout, he told me, so that's a pretty cool <laughs> side fact. He didn't note that when I asked him. That's good digging information, Scott Golden. Trying to bend that in, and he does. There is that former fighting Irish, kind of the tennis skills, hitting on that outside of the ball, Scott. Wow, I didn't think he'd go to the same spot three times, especially that Cangelosi is a lefty. So I thought, okay, he's going to cross over his body, get to his back end, but he just curled that thing around. Yeah, that one drifts a little deep. Now, the wind has been a major factor this weekend, Scott, uh, but right now it's pretty calm here on center court. Yeah, I'm sure the players are happy about that. Being with a wiffle ball, wind is never a good thing. Cangelosi muscling that one a little bit. First ball that he has left in the net after a quality start. This is definitely an interesting matchup. Um, Will obviously pushed Cangelosi to the brink the first time they played, but. Oh, nice touch. I'm noticing when Howells gets to the net, he's very effective cutting those angles off, and he's able to kind of dictate the point. Seems like when he stays back, Cangelosi is able to take control of those points a little better. Now Howells has a nice size cheering section right behind the baseline. And now he goes cross court, and his crowd explodes. Well, and that could be because Cangelosi's from the West Coast in Sarasota area. I think he's a little south of Sarasota. Uh, Howells is a local guy here, new on the scene, but very good player. I've, I've run some, some small little tournaments that we call them little money balls on like a Friday night. He's always up for playing those, so he's hungry for getting better and improving each time. Yeah, and how about this performance for his first pro tournament, Scott? That's uh, impressive. These guys coming out of college playing tennis or, you know, a big background. Some of them even come out of a pro tennis background. They just translate so well over to the singles court. This is basically a smaller version of tennis for them. A couple nuances that have to change and the adjustments, maybe the cat and mouse up in the kitchen that you wouldn't really see much of. But other than that, this translates really well. Score is 5-3 here in the first. First match of the day in a impressive looking lineup. Putting it into the corner. Nice touch there with a two-hander, with finesse shot. You know, I, every time I go back and visit my parents, I always tell them, I wish you would have got me into tennis at three like all these other guys because <laughs> these guys, their two-handed backhands are just beautiful. I clipped the net and then sailed all the way long. Actually, we did have our kind of our first gust of wind behind that shot of Howells. Is that the commentator's curse as soon as you mentioned it out loud? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, it's my specialty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a drop there from Cangelosi. That's the effectiveness of a drop shot. Even in singles, people think that passing shots are the most important shot, but oftentimes if you're playing a great opponent that can cover the net side to side, you have to drop that ball and, and change elevation to get them to hit up on the ball, which is exactly what he made Howells do in the previous point. Uh, Cangelosi may be going for a little more hitting into the gust of wind. It went for a too much more. And it looks like they're playing with the Franklin ball, so it should be a little easier to control those um, with or against the wind with the, the Franklin. I believe that's what they're using. I, 
I'm kind of far away, but I think that's the ball that they're using right now. It's either that or the Oso. Oh, that's right. It's the Oso. Yeah. Oh, gorgeous inside and fading off of the court. Not an easy shot to pull off. Well, I know, Scott, you were excited about this lineup today, uh, getting the, catching an early flight to make sure you're back, and we're so happy to have you here back in Delray. Definitely. Yeah, I just flew in on a red eye from Richmond, Virginia, teaching a, a pickleball camp and excited to be here with you in the booth for Championship Sunday. And Scott Golden, one of the uh, premier coaches here in the area, in the Delray Boca area, when you're not playing. Good spot deep in that corner. Tough to get that one back on court. So seven to three. Cangelosi serving. Oh, he read it right, didn't he, Scott? He did. You know, that ball again just dipping and changing elevation. That forces Howells to hit up on the ball, and he's trying to keep it low because the the athleticism from Kangeloshi, he can take one or two steps and be in there and attack that ball and volley out of the air. So, yeah, that forces some of those errors, and a great job and a great start from Kangeloshi. I really think the points have been really competitive. I It's it's actually impressive that he's up 8-3 because Howells has been putting up a lot of resistance. But just those unforced errors – is the difference in the eight to three score right now from what I'm seeing. Cangelucci just a little sharper. Kyle's getting a little coaching there deep in the corner. What do you think the advice is at this point? My guess is he's playing a lefty and I think he's trying to go to the forehand of Cangelucci a little too much. And Cangelucci has a nice forehand roll. So I'm thinking that he's telling him, hey, you need to attack that right foot of Cangelosi a little more. He's not doing as much with that backhand. Um, that would be that would be the advice that I would give him. I, who knows if that's actually what he mm. said, but um, it's good to have a coach in your corner either way, even if he's not giving you uh, the best advice all the time, just having somebody there for moral support is good. Oh, that's too good by Cangelosi. He was deep off of the baseline, able to angle that down into the kitchen. Leads me to my next question. You, you mentioned playing the lefty. We know the Southpaws have a big advantage in many sports, baseball, tennis. How about on the pickleball court, Scott? I, I absolutely believe it's an advantage in pickleball as well. A righty's used to seeing 80 to 85% of players that are right-handed. You get used to hitting those shots in rhythm, and you go to hit that same shot, and all of a sudden it's into the trap of a forehand. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's a huge advantage. Also, just the way lefties hit is a little bit different as well. Just naturally, they hit differently, so. Oh, diving head first in the net. How about that effort from Cangelosi? Oh, that's great. I think he gets it if it's on the same side as him. He had to dive kind of cross court <laughs> to get it. And then if you get it, then you got to ask the question, can he get back up and defend the next one? But a oh, <laughs> great effort. If anybody could, it would be Cangelosi. I mean, th this guy, he played semi-pro ice hockey. Major college ice hockey, so. He's not afraid to skin those knees up diving <laughs> a little bit. That was wide. I guess if you get hit with a hockey puck versus a pickleball, it's not really the same comparison. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, you need those pads in hockey. Although we'll see Ed and Leek up playing later. You might need pads playing against him. Oh, boy. I always told him if he didn't make it in pro pickleball, he could play uh, uh, another sport like pro football at linebacker oh, or right. even UFC. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Go at 6'5", 2'4". Tight end on the football field. Oh, Carl Foster was ready to challenge him to a fight yesterday, I think. <laughs> I got to hear more details on that. <laughs> oh, look at the touch by the left-hander. Well, and I think just Will continuing to attack that forehand of Cangelosi, Howes has got to do a little bit better job of mixing up these shot selections. He's going to the same spot too many times, especially on that forehand. Cangelosi seems to sit heavy on his forehand, so he's got to mix those up. 
Ah, you could hear. I think he said, dude, dude. Can't give that one away. I'm surprised that's all he said. That's, a, I think, the third or fourth missed return in this first game. I got to tell you, he's going for a lot on those two-handed backhand returns, hitting really flat. He's got to get some arc under those and get those things a little deeper. Ah, yeah, Cangelosi celebrates his game one victory, cruising 11-4. to four. Remember, these two went three games when they played in the first. Wouldn't be surprised if it happens again. We'll see what happens in the second. We'll be back. Okay, welcome back, everybody. Game two here at the third annual Delray Beach Pickleball Open presented by Baptist Health, Championship Healthcare, and Palm Beach County Sports Commission. Ooh, aggressive beginning for Cangelosi to get the quick side out. Well, Ari, you touched on switching sides. The wind's going to be a little different for both players on this side. Another strong start for Cangelosi, but I think Howes is playing a little too aggressive. He's just striking the ball very flat right now and in trying to pass. He's got to get a little more creative in the way he plays this second game. Pretty overhead by Will. See if that side makes a difference, as you said. And, you know, the wind's starting to pick up. It will be the back of Cangelosi. Deep serve. There's a drop. Now, it hung up there, but yeah. I like that he's mixing things up because before he would have just ripped the two-handed backhand straight down the line, and that would have got countered. So he's Right idea, for, huh, Scott? Yes, and he's looking for different answers. Deep return. Boy, that's, that's some wheels from Cangelosi. Almost stuck that somehow. Just the fact that Cangelosi got there and then did something with that ball that was more than just popping it up is very impressive. It gives you an insight to the athleticism and skill set that he possesses. Oh, beautiful pass. Didn't have much of an angle either there, Scott. He was center line and still able to drop it in. Yeah, he really squeezed that into that corner. But I'd like to see Will maybe slow his serve down or his return down a little and maybe get a little more depth on it. Some, some time for him to get up there and really establish himself. He's getting passed too easily right now. Yeah, it went for a little more on that return. I feel like the return's been pretty effective, Scott. He's, ke he's kept it deep. Deep, but I think what I was referring to is um, he's hitting him fast with aggressive gotcha. pace, and it doesn't allow him enough time to get there and then st set up. He's getting passed as he's coming in. So either that or he needs to maybe stay back another step and possibly try to catch him a little earlier. But he's doing a good job here. Just phenomenal here at the Delray Beach Pickleball Open. A delight to watch. Man, Cangelosi can move out there, can he? Boy, both of these guys, I tell you, he must have been listening to me and uh, tried to prove me wrong there because right as I said he was getting past, he defended, <laughs> Hal defended really well, so. The dude again. 
when Hollis is calling himself dude, it's it's typically in a negative light. So. <laughs> yeah, he's frustrated because he cannot pass Cangelosi like he wants to, but he doesn't know the solution to the problem yet. I, I really think he's got to he's got to slow things down a little bit. Cangelosi feeds off of that fastball and is really handling it. So you go slice on him or f more float. I think more just changing the elevation, getting that ball down into the kitchen, it's going to allow Will to slow things down a little bit and kind of see the court a little better. Right now, things are happening so fast. He's not able to adjust. Oh, that's too good by Howells. His cheering section says the same thing. That's so good as they rise to their feet. I agree. He really bit down right there and decided he wasn't going to lose that rally no matter what. One three. One three. And he gets an easy one, the first of the match for Howells. That has to be a relief. Well, again, I think changing sides, the wind's blowing from the back of Cangelosi coming towards the face of Hal, so that might be an advantage for him in game two. There he goes. See how he's dropping the ball a little more? Oh, fortunate there. I a little dispute. Yeah, it looked a little bit wide from here. I agree, Scott. Of course, as a competitor, you want that ball to be in. It's so very badly. close, very close. <laughs> yeah. Well, Cancelosi, we saw the sportsmanship uh, that he has early on when there was a disputed call, and he gave the ball to Howells. Good, Look at this court effort. coverage. Oh. That's where I think on that last one, instead of him trying to hit a screaming winner down the line to the forehand of Cangelosi, he's got to reset that ball a little bit, drop it into the kitchen, and then he can reestablish. That's where I think he, he's trying to just force the issue there. Well, this is his first pro tournament. Gaining experience. Oh, that's a beautiful cross court roll from Cangelosi. Will's going to put that paddle down. He's... In jeopardy here, get a time out. Well, you're pretty familiar with Howells, as you, you mentioned. You've seen him play quite a bit in the area. Um, new to the game, relatively. So yeah, coming right. from tennis, I mean, is that the hardest transition, is, is those drops consistently into the kitchen? Yes, I believe so, because in tennis, you, you've got to think they're used to and ingrained in their, their body mechanics, staying back and hitting passing shots. That's what tennis is in singles. You're looking for those angles. In this, it's it's more important to change elevation and to um, to change elevation and to uh, get that ball down into the kitchen. Okay, Cancelosi to serve. Overhead slam, and Howells comes out of the timeout with a statement. Well, those timeouts are huge and, and really important for somebody who's down, who's a little flustered. That 60 seconds gives you time to reset, kind of get your mental game back in check, and Howells coming out with a big overhead, like you said, to put an exclamation point. There you go, see he's starting to see the, the light now. He's starting to change elevation on the ball. Left that one up. Recovers though, turns it into offense. So that was almost an identical situation where the ball kind of got out wide and the first one he tried to hit a winner at the bottom of the net. That time, if you noticed, he rolled it, changed pace, and he was able to win that point. So that is his progression. He's actually getting better point to point as he starts to see this unfold in front of him. Very smart player in-house. 
Goes with a slice serve. And pulling that one off the court, Cangelosi. A rare error from John. Well, I think the difference there is Howells has been putting the ball out wide so that Cangelosi can roll those balls. That one was right into his core. He was not able to do anything with that, and he got jammed up just a bit. 5-4. Uh, right idea, though, right, John? Yeah, and, and honestly, that drop is what he should have been doing in game one, but he wasn't there yet. His progression hasn't developed at that point, so now he's starting to see, okay, I can't pass C Congelosi, so I'm going to have to start dropping the ball. Terrific return there, deep into the backhand corner. Howells it gets it back for his first lead here this match. Go ahead. So isn't it funny how the momentum shifted and now the, the shoulders are shrugged and kind of dropping from Cangelosi and, and Howells has gotten more energy. It's funny how that, that changes in these games. Uh, tried to bend that into the kitchen, but hitting into the wind on this near side. Court, good effort by Cangelosi, just too difficult. Yeah, he left that second to last ball up a little higher and that gave the angle off the court for Howells to put it away. But this is definitely a different player in game two from Howells. Take something off that serve. Boisterous crowd behind the baseline. It looked like Cangelosi kind of glanced up in their direction after that point. Is that distracting? I don't think so, but I think he recognizes that there's a crowd behind Howells that's pushing him to, to victory here in game two. That's gorgeous. And I do know Howells well enough. He likes the attention. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean, he feeds off that good energy. So when he's got his crowd behind him and he's hitting his shots, he's going to propel himself into success. And, and you can see right now that he has got all the momentum in his favor. And I saw the uh, person that Cancelosi was warming up with here, this young lady. She was signaling time out <laughs> for, for John. I think he was feeling the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's interesting. There, you know, technically, we're not supposed to coach, but sometimes if you can give those subtle hints, um, it works. You know, and I think as a player, you sometimes get into this dark I guess, rabbit hole of just keep continuing to play. You don't know how to get out of it, and you'll sometimes just fall down into that deep, uh, dark hole. But having someone in your corner, even if it's just, hey, get a quick timeout and get yourself reset. It's funny, how ben, ben Johns never, I feel like Ben Johns never calls timeouts unless it's absolutely dire, but I think they're so important. Um, I know Ben's usually winning his matches. That's probably why he's not <laughs> calling timeout, but... Um, but yeah, th these are imperative that they use these timeouts in crucial situations. Staying with a slice serve. That gets line. It went for the ATP there, and it was wide. I love the idea, but he's 17 feet back behind the net when he tried that ATP, so probably not a high percentage shot. However, if you make that, you look like a hero, so. I'm not sure Will can do that. Howells, okay, so. Yeah, Trish Stewart warning, are they going to give Cangelosi the point? That's the question. I don't think so, but Howells is telling her that he had his left hand up. She's wanting to see a paddle up in the air. Hmm. She wants to see clearly. He said he just wasn't ready. He wasn't even set, but she had called the score. Well, this is kind of that conversation of – the chicken or the egg, right, uh, which comes first. She called the score so he can no longer be unready. However, if he's not ready in the first place, it's up to her to, to let him set up in a reasonable amount of time. So, and That point does go to Cangelosi. Let's yep. see if that is a turn of momentum here. Well, I think it's actually going to backfire on Cangelosi there. Not, not that it's his fault, but I think it's going to fire Howells up. And I think he's going to finish strong because he's motivated now to make sure he wins this game when something controversial goes against him. That's just the kind of player that he is. He's Got not going to let it affect him. 
you know, some players that would bother. Others it motivates, right? Absolutely, there you go. You called it, Coach Golden. Uh, <laughs> I just know his personality. Uh, he's a lot like me in that way. If somebody makes a bad line call or a ref kind of irritates me on something, I'm going to fire up and I'm going to make sure I get that victory um, versus unraveling and, and going down in two games. What a save. And Cangelosi, the overhead winner. He looks like 5'8 at the side out. Howes is, is still not out of the deep end here in game two. He, he's only up three. Cangelosi can turn things around very quickly, so let's make sure we pay attention to how this next few points go. Oh, doing the work with the volleys. Moving the ball around well. They're piling in even more fans here for Howes on this side. He's, he's getting a big, strong push of uh, fans in his corner for game two. 8-5. Make it nine, fist pump and a yes. We don't hear the dude. That's a good sign for Mr. Howells. That's a great point. And I'm just noticing the little differences in the way he's hitting his third shots. They're dipping, which is what I was referring to. He's making sure that he takes a little pace off and changes elevation. So now those balls are going into the net where game one, Cangelosi was hammering down on him for winners. So big adjustment there. Ah, Cangelosi too quick there. Forward before the contact. And we've got a game point for Will Howells. As this one may go three as their first matchup when Cancelosi won the third 11-6. What a shot there. Gorgeous drive. Miles. That's too what good. What a point. That's too good. What a point. That is fantastic Wow! finish right there. We couldn't ask for a more exciting oh, finish man. in game two. Uh, those are the kind of points you see Howells play, and you think, yeah, this guy's got top ten potential for sure. We are going three. What a start to the day here on Gold Medal Sunday from the third annual Delray Beach Pickleball Open. Men's Pro Singles Final, we're going three. What a start for the day. And we've got some maintenance work here. Howell's redecorating, Scott. <laughs> Lee Rosenthal says, hey, wait a minute, you're moving our plants around here. <laughs> yeah, Lee, Lee's probably thinking, hey, I took special care to move that plant That's exactly right. where it was supposed to I just to watered be. it, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just wa <laughs> Lee would water the plants like that. <laughs> he, he would. You know, this is going to be interesting because the side – 
that Cangelosi is starting on is the side that both players won on. Okay, Correct. the wind is in their face, and he's gonna have the first half. He's gonna have the first half on that side. So Howell's mindset should just be keep the score close enough at the change because they're going to switch at six, and he's going to end up on the side that he just finished up winning. So he's just got to keep the points close and keep the score within 6-4, six, 6-5, uh, six, or even maybe winning. If you can start um, that process of even being up at the switch, you're going to be in good shape. Oh, pretty drop there. Oh, that is a gorgeous constructed point, isn't it? It is. He was moving them side to side and really dictating that point. Uh, again, Cangelosi having a chance to reflect a little bit between game two and game three, and he looks to be focused, have a game plan, and he also, I feel like, is, is reset uh, from game one where he won easily. Uh, he's coming back to that. What a clean winner on the backhand return. Cangelosi doesn't look like the kind of guy that's going to get rattled or easily. He played semi-pro hockey in Germany. I feel like that's, uh, yeah, that's way harder than pickleball, <laughs> probably. <laughs> Good deep shot from Cangelosi. Out of the air attack and a fist pump. I'm not sure if the viewers at home can see the speed on camera like we can in person, but that is insanely quick footwork from House as he saw the ball pop up just enough. If he waits and lets that bounce, it gives Cangelosi time to adjust and defend. That time he took advantage, took time and space away and won that point. Yeah, good point, Scott. And the wind was knocking that ball down, and he was there in a second. Like that attack. No hesitation. Ari, right, wouldn't it be nice to be 23 again? <laughs> <laughs> I used to think 50 was old, Ari, until I got 38. Now I'm thinking, that's not so far yeah, away. Don't talk to me about <laughs> age over there, Scott, you young man. <laughs> Ooh, thought it might dribble over, but the Howell crowd celebrates again. Now, because Cangelosi won the first time they played and was sitting in the winner's bracket, finals or in the finals undefeated if Howells gets game three they will have to have a game to 15 I believe to break that tie Howells going right at him good leave there by Cangelosi that takes incredible discipline I don't know if anybody out there has ever tried to lay off a, a fastball right at your chest it's not the easiest thing to do Oh, goes behind him, well placed. Three, two here, Trish Stewart. Good direction there by Cangelosi. Yeah, the depth and angle on that shot was really good, and it, it didn't allow House to step in and drive through his two-handed backhand. It, it put a little more pressure on him. He had to slice that backhand, which is a tougher shot. Oh, I hope he's okay. That was a collision. Cangelos is going to go check on his opponent. Look at Howells just jump up with a smile on his face. <laughs> Relieved to see that. We're quite a ways away, and I heard that thump up against yeah. the, the wall back there, so I thought he might have uh, actually injured himself. But, no, he's got a big smile, like you said. A little guard so the ball doesn't go through. But fortunately, I think it was the, the, the bottom of his shoes that made that thump and not his body. Comes back with a deep return <laughs> right off the line. Wait, Cangelosi questioning, did he – he's just confirming he's – Thought he saw it in. Well, he spun his head around and looked at his ah. girlfriend wife at first, and she didn't really give him any kind of indication that it was out, so he, he kind of let it go quickly. But That one clearly out. 
Yes, no question there. Fouls going to the towel. With authority there. This is so ironic. This looks like game one when Howells was just trying to hammer the ball through uh, Cangelosi. Now the role has been reversed, and now Cangelosi is just trying to pass him. And Howells looking a lot more confident in game three. He seems like he's really got a pep in his step and forcing a timeout. Cangelosi gets, gets the timeout. We'll sit under an umbrella over there, cool off. It is 3-3 in the third. Cangelosi, you mentioned it too, Scott. He said, always difficult to beat the same player twice in the same day. And for Howells, he said, yeah, I've had a look at his game. It is an advantage. Yeah, and, you know, you mentioned this earlier. He's very new to pickleball. I, I saw him. He, he played in that little bitty tournament that I did. I don't even call it a tournament. It's just a little round robin with some local people. And... He, he did pretty well for his first time, like, really competing with some 5-0 players. And he's just gotten progressively better ever since then. And I'm, now I'm seeing his game evolve as we watch him play on championship court. It's quite fascinating to watch these tennis players come in and just adjust. They just adjust and evolve it, it, game to game, point to point. We'll see another one shortly with Hurricane Black. Cangelosi at the court just couldn't knock it over. One of the biggest differences that I'm seeing in Howes in game three versus game one when he lost is he's cleaned up the unforced errors. A lot of the shots that he's missing uh, are forced errors, and then he's also being a lot more assertive and aggressive coming in, taking balls out of the air. Ooh, that was wide. He's striking the ball with immense confidence, though, as you mentioned, Scott. Well, and as we know in sports, confidence goes a long way, momentum takes you a lot further than you normally would go, so we'll see how this shifts either way. Two-hander for the put away. Gets the serve back. Wind starting to pick up just a little bit. Still blowing from the back side of Howells currently. 4-3. Well, you like the effort there, and that's where you would advise Howell to place it. Yes, and it was to the right foot or the backhand of Cangelosi, so he's making sure he puts himself in good positions to try to attack that next ball, so... He's seeing the, the, the shots he needs to see. He just didn't make that one. That drifts wide. Cancelosi questioning himself. Uh, can't find the solutions at the moment. They came easily in the first. When he won the first game 11-4. That drifts out, so Howells, it just, right now, the way he's striking it, seeing it, it, it's coming easy for him. Definitely, and this is interesting. In my mind, I was thinking, oh, well, Howells' fan club is on the opposite end of him right now, but the thing is, every time he wins a point, they cheer, so that's yeah. got to be a little distracting for Cangelosi. Can't put that one in the court. Good attack by John as he tries to fire himself up. The first match, it was 11-6, Cangelosi in the third. 3-5 serving now. Oh, he guided it out to set it up perfectly for himself. I actually thought he, I thought he was going to nail that one easily. He had so much time, but it did sell wide. So I, I wonder how that will affect his psychological game here as he missed an easy one. Sometimes you get hung up on that when you know you should have got an easy point. 
Cam Chelosi looking to tie. But that is a sensational return. That's another adjustment that he's made. He's making sure that he gets those returns over the net and deep with a lot of pace. And he's really ta taking control of these points early. Where in game one, I felt like he was trying to, to force the issue too much and was being a little rushed on his returns. Now he's really settled in. Entire court goes cross court for the winner. So interesting. House was on the side that both players lost, and he's actually winning 6-4, yeah. which is what I was talking about. You said just keep it close. Keep well. it close, or if you're slightly winning at the switch, you're going to have that good mindset because he knows in the back of his mind he won on this side. So now, Cangelosi can't help but think, oh, goodness, I lost game two on that other side. So this is the psychological part of the game that, that we have to factor in. But I think Cangelosi, he's a competitor. He's only down two at the switch. I really think he's going to dig in deep he's going to find ways to get some, some momentum back in his favor. But it's not going to be easy against House. He's feeling the – Look at House. Talk about you, – you told it. He's feeding off his crowd. He's giving high fives, and now he's got them right behind him. They've got his back. Definitely. And his mixed doubles partner is the one that he high-fived with. She is really an energetic, outgoing, positive person. So I think he needs that for his, his psychological, uh, you know, game going into this second half of game three. What a way to start the day, and we may be going to 15. If Howells can pull the third out, leading 6-4, hitting into the win now. Quick side out for Cangelosi. I'm definitely interested to see the adjustments that Cangelosi is going to make here as he finds himself in a hole. But he does have that 15 game in his back pocket. He knows that, so as long as his mindset is is good with that, he should be fine. Ooh, Cangelosi upset with himself. That's one he will typically stick. Seven four. What do you think of Howell's serve, Scott? He's really wide open with his stance. Well, that's um, that's something that I think he's just developed on his own, maybe, or maybe he got a little coaching on that. That's just a, a, a stylistic thing or a, a preference. Uh, we don't teach either way when we teach. We we typically let people decide what's comfortable for them. But that definitely seems to be a consistent serve for him. He's elected to take that out of the air. It wasn't quite there. Well, and I think that the difference is he took, he was late on his step to get there. In yep. the other ones, he was stepping in early, getting there to the ball, and that time he was kind of late to the party getting there, and, and obviously the result was it went out. Beautiful pass straight down the line with a backhand. 5-7. So this is Cangelosi right here d just really hunkering down and saying, I'm not going down in game three without a big fight, and he is finding ways to get it done. Went for that spot again. Well, that net a little bit higher there on the sidelines. Well, I think this is the major difference between singles and doubles in pickleball. Is in singles, you lose that rally, you get the ball right back for the other team to try to score. In doubles, you get that second serve, which can kind of save you sometimes. So this is uh, definitely a psychological game more than anything in singles. Had the cross court open and Will saying, what am I doing? Trish coming over to the crowd here. She told them they can't do something. I didn't catch what she said, but I think it may have to do with distracting the players during the point possibly. Yeah, well, they're sitting right up the center line and with a clear vision there for Cangelosi, so possibly, yeah. Or coaching. That's the other thing. Could be coaching. Oh, boy. Oh, my gosh. He almost got there. Sensational. 
I don't even know how Cangelosi got a paddle on that last one. That angle was so good from House, but again, showing incredible speed and athleticism in that ability to go get that short drop shot from House. Incredible. Deep serve. Big forehand. Well, this is where I think House has got to settle down. He's missed a couple shots like that where he really should be putting those balls in play and he's trying to hit clean winners on these and he needs to just settle into these points a little more and realize he's got the lead. He just has to outplay his opponent and keep that ball between the white lines. Right now, he's giving opportunity back to his opponent. 5-7. That's deep, wind behind him. You definitely see the, not negative body language, but the frustration in the, the shoulders and the, and the facial expression of Cangelosi right now. He's just missing. You know, he's got the opportunities in front of him. He's not hitting his targets right now. He's got to make some, some adjustments as well and keep that ball in play. He's keeping the pressure on, keeping Howells deep. I think Cantalosi's got to find the forehand of Howells because in game three, he has really found his groove on his two-handed backhand being Howells. So I think that's where he needs to find it right there, that forehand. He's not quite as sharp on his forehand side as he is in his backhand side. Yeah. Which is, you don't say that oftentimes, but with right. tennis players, they sometimes possess a better two-handed backhand than, the, than a forehand. Howell's putting both hands up when he needed more time. Oh, Cangelosi had that up the line, hit net. He has definitely creeped back into this, though. It's 7-6 in favor of Howells here in game three. But Cangelosi just sticking around, and he's just getting side outs and opportunities and side outs and opportunities. So, Yeah, he's okay with a, a grinding game. Feel that favors Cangelosi, but he's down two, eight, six. Oh, it's so tough when you give those free points away on missed returns. Oh, there's the backhand as he ran around it, took the ball down the center line with the backhand. You called it, Scott. Wasn't that very telling? You, you said he ran around his forehead, so he knows where his bread and butter is. It's up to Cangelosi to find that forehand, to make shots over to that right side, put a little pressure on him and make him keep control that forehand. There it is. Oh. We've got another freebie, and he is one point away from forcing the 15-point playoff. Cangelosi going to give himself a brief break, try to regroup. So I've, I've had a mindset where instead of calling timeout at 10-6, where you're, you come back and there's a lot of pressure where you just can't give up a point, I've started calling it at 9-6, give myself a little a little buffer. So it's interesting, the, most players call it at 10. I've started calling it at 9 now, uh, just to give myself that opportunity to have two, two points. I'd like to again thank our sponsors here, USA Pickleball, Celsius, Baptist Health, of course, Foster Events Group, National Pickleball Expo, Boca Raton Picklers of the NPL, Palm Beach Sports Commission, Pickle TV, Inside World Pickleball, World Pickleball Group, Vitality Wellness, PB1965, Tyrol, Oso, RevTech, Splish, Natural Sport, and Prime IV. Ten six. And there it is. We are going 15, 11 to 6. So this is always interesting to me. When you go to the game to 15, what happens is they give, you, they give the players 10 minutes to, to have a break. And oftentimes that will break the momentum of the player that just won game three. And we'll oftentimes see the momentum shift back or at least more of a neutral game in, in the 15 game. It'll be interesting to see what these players do in their 10-minute in their uh, as they come back and how prepared they, they stay. 
Well, buckle in. This is going to be entertaining. They're going to 15. Howells and Cangelosi in the men's pro singles. We'll be back. and Brandon Hupschman and Martin Emmerich and Mike Forster. And our finale will be a senior pro singles finale. They're playing right now out throughout the courts, course two and three, as well as in the outer courts for the right to get to the gold medal here on championship court. Our women's singles final, if you're wondering, was a walkover. Hurricane Tyree Black picks up the gold medal for women's singles as Heather Nobler, playing yesterday, had to withdraw for today's final. She takes the silver.
We are back at the third annual Delray Beach Pickleball Open presented by Baptist Health and Palm Beach County Sports Commission. Carl Foster and his uh, events group create, manage, and deliver, and they certainly have delivered again this year here at Delray. Carl down there right now getting the fired, uh, get the crowd fired up. Good crowd coming in. 1,000 box seats, VIP covered seats, and veranda. And it'll be Cangelosi serving to begin the game to 15 to decide gold. There's one for John. Without a doubt, this game to 15 is going to have a lot of ups and downs for both players, a lot of momentum shifts, but it's going to be exciting either way. And Cangelosi getting back out to that start that he had in game one. Angelosi serving into the wind here. Uh, they will switch at eight. The advantage has been sir, uh, hitting into the wind, correct, Scott? That's absolutely correct. And a lot of times that's because hard-hitting players can still drive that ball with some pace, and it'll still stay inside the lines. So they like that. They can hit a little harder and not have to worry about control as much. Angelosi inspecting the ball as that ball never came up at all. Howells will check it out as well. And Howells crowd behind Cangelosi. And they have been boisterous. They've been involved here, Scott. Absolutely. And that if you don't think that momentum from fans is a, is a real thing, to watch the NBA Finals when somebody <laughs> plays at home on their home courts. Every time there's a three made, they go crazy. So that's the same type of mentality. Home team advantage. Gorgeous backhand winner down the line. I really think Cangelosi is making a mistake returning to the backhand of House. I think on the forehand side, it's a little more predictable. He likes to roll, and he's not House is not quite as good going down the line straight with his forehand. But when he's on his backhand side, it's excellent. And their return to the forehand wasn't a bad third ball by Howells by any means, but even a better fourth from the lefty Cangelosi. Yeah, really hard angle. It's, it's amazing that both these guys can get to those short balls. I, I would have just said, hey, great shot. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I've, I've seen you on the court. You've got some wheels, man. I just don't recover the same way <laughs> they do. A uh, little tight in that backhand. And again, going into the breeze, really gusting up now into the face of Cangelosi. Starting to smell good, those uh, food trucks down there cranking away. A rare miss off the backhand wing from Will Howells. Yeah. 
Carlos, he was there. That's the right shot. He stepped in and was trying to pass Howell's cross across his body. He just missed, but he, he's got the right mindset stepping into those. Went back to the forehand side. That's where Coach Golden is advising. Yeah, and it's not groundbreaking, you know, evidence, except for he's just not as controlled with his forehand. He likes to whip it, and sometimes you lose a little bit of that consistency when you try that on his backhand. He is really sharp with his two-handed backhand. So we call two bounces. Great effort there off a splendid drop with the backhand by Howells. I wonder if the referee saw the two bounces because I don't know if the players can call that with the referee. I'm not sure. Angelosi, fortunate. Howell's looking to his crowd and indicating three, and I think he's saying three balls that I should have made on that. I, I would say so, yes. Here's the cat and mouse that the top pros are so used to doing. Oh, outstanding play. Side to side, these two, two of the quicker players you'll see. I actually think that Cangelosi is a little more polished as far as the touch up at the net, the, the feel. Uh, he's got a little more experience in that realm. I think he should find a way to draw Howells into the, the kitchen a little bit more and not get into these firefights. Who bends that inside the sideline? Outstanding work. He's finding that form again in the game to 15. That's what we saw so much of in game one was those passing shots going across the body and kind of making Howells question where he needed to be on the court position-wise. Really nice shot there. Deep return draws the error. 2-3. Howell's crowd trying to get him fired up. Scores 2-3. Oh, that backhand deadly. I could be wrong, but I think I saw that clip the top of the net cord, which will throw off your rhythm just a little bit, so that Ball might have gotten over his paddle just a little bit because of that. Return to the forehand and a good one, nice and deep. Side out at three all. There's a long way to go in this game. Three three is far from the finish line. 15 points in singles is an uphill battle to get to. Tried to run around the backhand <laughs> there. The wind was also taking it. And that's actually a smart strategy for Cangelosi if he can hit right into the core section um, of Howells, maybe between his left foot and his right foot, so he can't stretch out and, and roll those balls. Ooh, he came with velocity up the line. Angelosi by two. Howells had it covered. Well, he guessed right that time and took control of that point early. In singles, you don't have that second partner off to the left of you, so once you go out wide, you pretty much have to hit a perfect shot to allow you time to recover. That's what I think Ben Johns does so well. He's always in control during singles points. Never looks like he's out of position or, or rushing. Staying right there, we get a big come on from Cangelosi. Uh, it's been a little while since he's had any kind of significant advantage or lead, so he probably feels really confident right now, up 6-3 now off that missed return. And there's that body blow you were talking about. Again, getting Howells out of position. He wants to run around and take the backhand, but not able to get completely set. And he's going to get a timeout here, 7-3, I believe. Right before the switch at 8. Uh, 
I actually think it's six three, but okay. But either way, the difference I believe right now, Ari, is the missed two missed returns. Those are free points, so that's two out of the six there. And then, he, and then you have to remember in singles he doesn't have that second serve, so he's missed, according to him, three third shot drives that went out wide or or long that he's missed opportunities to score points. So that right now the difference in the gap at six three, but again the side that. Cangelosi's on has been the winning side, so I'm not surprised that the score is in favor of Cangelosi right now, but there's a long way to go. Quick pep talk received by Howells during that TO. Six three. Oh, oh Cangelosi that dribbled over. He apologizes. That's an unfortunate roll for Howells and a really nice roll for Cangelosi, but he, he guessed in the direction that Howells was taking that ball. He cut it back across his body on that backhand slice. So really good execution. Fist pump, side out. Three seven. It's sometimes hard to verbalize what makes one side more advantageous than the other. The only thing I can think is that they're having to be a little more precise with their shots on the side that Howes is playing on currently because of the wind situation. That's that's the only thing I can come up with. Just missing there. Cangelosi appealing <laughs> over to Trish. I don't think he's got a case on that one either. That ball that ball is got a hard spin off the side of the court. It it was definitely wide from, from our vantage point. Um and called wide, but Cangelosi looking for something. Uh, of course he's trying to appeal to the crowd, but the crowd means nothing as far as the significance of a call. He gets the ball back up 7 4. Gorgeous volley cross courts. Both these players are doing such a great job closing to the kitchen line and then using their athleticism to get those hard angles, putting a lot of pressure on the next shot. Just deep house questions with Trish Stewart. But do you see what I mean about his forehand? He he really cranks on that forehand and oftentimes he's a little less precise with that shot on his forehand side. He likes to be a little more aggressive with it. Yeah, much, much easier to massage the tennis ball than this uh, wiffle ball. Especially when you have the wind behind you. All right, so 8-4 at the switch. You know, the, the score is by no means a blowout, but that's a good advantage for Cangelosi going on to the other side, being up four. They're playing a game to 15. Still a long way to go for both players, but the advantage definitely in the favor of Cangelosi going into the second half, but he's also going to be on the side that they've not traditionally done as well on, so we'll see how this plays out. A little conversation between the competitors there. I wonder what that's all about. Maybe a call or two. It didn't seem like, a, you know, a, a good shot, great game type conversation. No, there's no paddle tap there. And, you know, they're competitors. I like to see a little bit of that. You know, we coming from a non-tennis background, uh, we're always so polite in pickleball, but these tennis players, they bring some of that grittiness from tennis. Ooh, digging down, getting down low. Credit Halls there. He did kind of applaud the effort of his opponent. Cangelosi, Cangelosi digging in. Nine, four. So 
So now Hall has that crowd right behind him. They have his back. And we've seen him feed off of their energy. That's right, Arian. Usually it just takes one or two shots to change the momentum back in your favor, but he's got to string together a couple points in a row. Yes, too good there by Cangelosi. Yeah, I touched on this earlier. Both these guys really good at creating angles off those high shots over the net. You've got to get that ball to change elevation and dip down over the net into the kitchen. We call it the neutral zone. You've got to use that neutral zone to your advantage. Ooh, gets a freebie there. And there's the dude, dude the again dude, that he's yeah, saying, which is not a good sign for, <laughs> no. for him when we hear that. Yeah, we haven't heard that since the first game where we heard it multiple times. And the dude in the Notre Dame shirt, former Fighting Irish tennis star. Yes, that gets outside line. Thumbs up from Will. Fair call there by Howells. Very close. And it's all Cangelosi at the moment. Yeah, tough to call that ball out. It was right on the line, and he gave credit where credit was due. Yeah. Paddle down, timeout. Well, this is the form that Cangelosi wanted. Uh, he was able to let go of those that set of three games that he lost. He's able to reset his mind. Like I said, they give you that 10 minutes. He clearly was able to wipe that loss away. And now he finds himself in the driver's seat up 12-4, in control, all the momentum in his favor. And actually, he's been doing a great job on that side where they have traditionally not done as well. So he's really focused right now. And Howells will seem to be coming off a little bit uh, down the stretch. Trailing by eight, this one again to 15 on the playoff. We'll see what kind of energy Howells can garner going to his crowd for encouragement. Men's pro singles, gold medal. Out of the timeout, missing a backhand. Sometimes when the gap's this big, it's really hard to reel things in. You start pushing and going for a little bit more. That was deep. Not an easy overhead here executed by Halls. He was really fading deep into the court, Scott. Yeah, it's a tennis shot for him I would have probably hit that ball six feet out but <laughs> Howes has that experience coming over from tennis and I, I see the effort from Cangelosi even up at 12-4 he's going for every ball he's trying to put that ball back between the lines and make his opponent hit one extra shot so good for him a couple of uh, free points would be encouraging for Howells well Cangelosi definitely doesn't need to let the momentum fade back into the court of Howes at this point, but. Cangelosi continuing to pressure. It was out, so 5-13, mountain to climb here for Will. You know, it's amazing, though. If he can just get two or three points consecutively, you know, if you get one point side out, one point side out, you can make a comeback, but you, you don't really create any type of real force or momentum back in your favor. You're just going to have to fight, scratch, and claw for each point there. But if he can get a couple good points in a row, he could shift the momentum back to his favor, but he's got to really find a way to do that. And currently, he's not stringing together much of anything, and that's the way he's found himself down 13-5. Two points away for the lefty.
Good fight there by Howells. His fans. There's that two-hander. It is a beauty to watch. Well, he rode that two-hand to victory in the two out of three series. Let's see if he can get back to that form and really start to shift. Boy, these guys really scrambling right here. That was in. Oh, could be the point of the match, and that could help determine the outcome. Yeah, I think so. I, I think Howell's had an opportunity to really get a second point in a row, and he, he dropped that one and not able to close that point out. Now the momentum again just soaring and the confidence for Cangelosi. Match point. And he lets it fall wide. Now he fi Howells finds himself in the deep end at match point, 14-6. And here it is for gold. And there it is, striking the two-hander. Cangelosi celebrates. What a match. Two terrific competitors and great to see the hug afterwards. A little bit of contention, but, but but that's expected. Yeah, I mean, they're competitors. These guys both coming from a tennis background and a semi-pro hockey background. You're going to see that. But nothing but mutual respect. Candelosi doing what it took to get the job done in game to 15. He dialed in late in that game and really made the shots that he had to to finish it off. Wow, what an exciting singles pro final to kick off this day on Championship Sunday. What a great way to start. We're going to have Kim Bocala of Baptist Health presenting the medal. We're going to send it right down to Carl Foster courtside. It helps, believe me, root, rooting them on, getting that extra energy. As we know, singles is not easy. Guys, switch on this camera over here. Let's go. Let's go this way. Go this one. Okay. All right, we are live in Delray Beach with our singles finale. Come on over here, guys. Tight. First of all, uh, Will Howes, just a great match. I came through the opportunity bracket, as we called. You guys played early on in the tournament. We saw some of that match here on the stadium court. Just a just tough match back and forth. What was the difference today? You came back. You won the two out of three. So I'll give you the chance. But talk about the tournament overall. Yeah, uh, John's a great player. He was super tough the whole time. Uh, he scraps really hard, gets every ball back, and uh, it was a great tournament from him. Um, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers here today. And uh, I want to thank my parents for all their help here. And, of course, the cheering section right over here was, uh, was great all tournament long. So, And thank you for running this great tournament. Thank you, Will. And let's have uh, Kim from Baptist Health, our presenting sponsor, presenting with the silver medal. <laughs> And I'll have your checks in the back room. You may want those, too. So John Cangelosi coming up here, winning the gold. And uh, John, talk about the match, because you guys played earlier. You won that. You, you advanced all the way to the winner's finale. Lost the two out of three and had to come back again. But you guys just were battling and grinding out there. Talk about the tournament for you. Yeah, it's been a, a great experience. I want to first off uh, give a shout out to Will and his uh, fan club. Very tough to play against. And uh, 
I knew today was going to be a tough match. Will brought so much energy, and he uh, he really bounced back. And I knew he was going to bring the energy. He's just a phenomenal player, and he's just going to keep better, getting better and better. So I'm looking forward to see uh, him in the future. Uh, overall, it's been a great experience. Uh, first championship Sunday, so definitely had some nerves coming in today. But uh, I knew I was just got to battle from the beginning, and the 10 minutes really helped. I was getting a little tired and a little, little nervous, so I... I needed time to, to reset, especially uh, with to match Will's energy. Uh, I want to say a happy Mother's Day, too, uh, to my mom as well, who hopefully is watching on the stream. And a uh, big thank you to uh, friends, girlfriend, training partner. Uh, thanks for being here and uh, for rooting me on today. Thanks so much. Thanks, John. His first gold medal on championship court. Tim Bacala from Baptist Health presenting the gold medal. Let's get some pictures together, guys, and uh, we'll get on with our mixed doubles finale coming up next. Okay, thank you, Carl Foster. And just to recap, it is John Cangelosi taking the men's pro singles gold. Terrific effort from Will Howells in his first pro tournament. How about that? We will be back uh, shortly. We've got mixed pro doubles on tap. Tina Pisnik and Martin Emmerich against Krista Getcheva and Nick Acevedo. So coming your way momentarily. Stay with us. What a day of action here at the third annual Delray Beach Pickleball Open.
we're back. Third annual Delray Beach Pickleball Open. Mixed doubles for gold. Tina Pisnik, Martin Emmerich. Champions of the main bracket. Taking on Krista Ketchaba and Nico Acevedo. Second serve, scoreless. That will fly, so a couple of side outs to begin this one. What a way to begin the day with John Cangelosi wrapping up gold in men pros singles. 15 point victory over Will Howells. Point game victory, I should confirm. Wind really gusting at the moment. Getchava pulled that wide. First point up on the scoreboard. Tina Pesnik to serve. Nice attack from Emmerich. Couple of points on the board. Two zero two. Hit by Nico, but then uh, Emmerich hits it into the plant. Nothing Ketchava can do about that. Martin Emmerich, left-handed strength, 3 nothing. Emmerich closing quickly, moves so well laterally, 4 to nothing. Oh, and a net court, everything going Pisnik Emmerich's way for a quick five. We'll see if Acevedo, and there is the timeout, Acevedo Getcheva. Scott Golden will be along in a moment. Look at some of the competitors in this one. Uh, Tina Pisnik and Emmerich took the front draw. Acevedo and Getcheva. They defeated Danquart and Greenhut to get to the finals. They lost to uh, Pisnik and Emmerich in the main 11-8, 11-3. Third annual Delray Beach Pickleball Open. Delray Beach Tennis and Pickleball Center presented by Baptist Health Championship Healthcare along with Palm Beach County Sports Commission. Tina Pisnik, who trained out of the Rick Macy Academy as a junior tennis player here in Boca Raton, nearby Boca. Played in the Miami Open as a pro player, reached 29th in the world. The Women's Tennis Tour. Just wide, very close. Krista has a second look. Unfortunately for Pisnik, a, a car accident ended her tennis career and wonderful to see her back as a pickleball pro. And we're getting everything back. Finally, they close it out and earn the side out. Pesnik out of Sylvania. Her counterpart, Krista Getcheva, also a tennis background, was the women's head coach at Northern Arizona University for some time. Emmerich. 
Look at Pishnik fired up. They're feeling it. Well, six nothing second serve here for Nico. That does land terrific hands by Pisnik. Her partner, Martin Emmerich, an outstanding tennis player and in his own right, the German ATP doubles rankings of 35 in the world back in 2013. You heard Emmerich say out as Pisnik pulled it back. And his counterpart, Nicholas Nico Acevedo from Chile. Second serve, Nico. Just finishing his tennis career over at FAU, playing for head coach Ricardo Gonzalez and the Owls. A great season. Winning the ITA South Region Doubles Championship. Nico and his partner defeating the likes of FSU, UM, UF, and Georgia. What a run. Side out as Acevedo and Getcheva look to get started here. Emmerich. He is taking over this first game. The energy, the explosiveness. All the momentum, all of the energy for Pisnik and Emmerich here in game one. Ball on the court. Eight zero, first serve. And getting that ball up in the wind, no chance to land on court. Nine to nothing. Take that, any help they can get. The Acevedo gets you beside as Scott Golden comes in and it's been all Martin Emmerich, Scott, early. Yes, the score really in favor of them in game one. Again, though, this is the side. There's that the broadcaster's jinx, too. I said Martin <laughs> Emmerich had taken over the game. He <laughs> hasn't missed a shot since they started. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But this is that side that uh, I feel like is a little easier to play on. All of a sudden, back-to-back -back missed shots there from Imrik and Piznik. And there's the first point of the match. Acevedo Getcheva. Nico trying to get more involved. What does it take sometimes for that, you know, the male to, to really start to feel it and, and take over most of the court, Scott? Yeah, they will make some adjustments. Unlike singles, we're making the transition into doubles now. It's a lot more of the nuances and strategies involved. It's a partnership. Uh, you've got to get on the same page. And you've really got to get settled in to the, the longer points. Acevedo emerging onto the pickleball scene as a current FAU tennis player locally here. Uh, plays the, the one spot for FAU. Yeah, just referred to his uh, double season, which was outstanding when the ITA, ITA South Region Championship. Yeah, he's an absolute stud. Obviously, uh, Gacheva just quitting her full-time job, committing full-time into pickleball. Uh, she is fully engaged at this point. I like the sound of that, quitting full-time job. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. She's been training actually off court with a local uh, sponsor 
of a lot of these tournaments. He's got the bands, and, and he's been working with her on specific pickleball moves. Mm. Uh, they've been posting some social media stuff. And like I said, I actually can take partial credit for this partnership. She, she actually asked me for Acevedo's phone number so she could team up with him. She knows he's a strong player, so. They're making it all the way to goal, this tandem. I can't take any credit for their success to the road to the gold, but I definitely think that they're a good partnership. And Emmerich and, and Pisnik, I think they're newer to teaming up at a tournament, but they, they're local together in the Tampa area um, and, and quite a force together. So, And they're going to get a timeout, so I don't know. You're taking too much credit for the getch of uh, Acevedo, but as soon as you – arrived in the booth all of a sudden it's turned around so <laughs> you deserve some credit for that <laughs> i get maybe get a little credit for that one hey, getcha, but you can see the improvement she just seems to be getting better and better becoming a force oh absolutely she is definitely going to be a force in pickleball she played high level tennis as we continue to sound like a broken record with that but that is true through and through as far as being a tennis player it converts over extremely well to, to pickleball they just have such a great foundation. That's what I'm noticing. You know, a lot of the shots that, say, I ha I've been playing seven years, Ari, I've had to spend countless hours working on certain shots to be able to just have those shots and not even saying that I'm good at them. It's just they already possess those shots. So then it's just coming in and adjusting to the, the little nuances of this game. I love watching tennis players come over and have success in singles early. That's fun to watch, but it's really fun to watch the progression in doubles as they figure out, oh, this has a lot more of the little pieces I have to put together, um, including partnerships. I know Nico and his mindset, um, he wants to go full-time into pickleball. He loves tennis. That's his first love, but he is fully committed as well to improving. So let's see if this game one continues in the favor of Imrik and Piznik or We've got a game one point here. Game point, Emmerich puts it in play. Look at this point. Oh, sensational and a big yeah from both Pisnik and Emmerich. They wrap up game one with relative ease, but you can see Acevedo and Getcheva building some confidence. Should be a good second coming up here from the third annual Delray Beach Pickleball Open. What if I showed you a new way to view wellness through the lens of nature in its purest form? At Splish Naturals, we believe that everyone deserves wellness. We have one line of products that can help your body in countless different ways. Name your pain. It can all vanish in minutes if you know what your body needs to protect it. Our products are unlike anything you've seen before. The intersection where nature strengthens performance. It's your body and you only get one. So ask yourself, am I going to protect it? Question, what do you need most when you're on the court? Is it stability, breathability, comfort, or support? Well, now it doesn't have to be either or. Footwear designed by pickleball players for pickleball players. Introducing the Striker Pro V by Tyrol. Available at TyrolPickleball.com. Back here, mixed game two. Gacheva Acevedo will start it out, having dropped the first 11 to three. It's definitely an interesting matchup because Acevedo has tremendous power, but he's playing against a lefty that possesses as much or more power as he does and has a little more pickleball experience now at this point. So it'll be interesting to see 
that unfold as they will be straight ahead from each other. I, I really feel like Acevedo can set up some of his points if he goes cross-court dinking with Piznik. She's very consistent, but she's not going to really do anything on that back end that's going to hurt you. She's just steady. And that lands in. Just as you said, Acevedo going directly at Piznik here. And for the finish. Yeah, I've played against Piznik and Emmerich. Emmerich just has crazy power. He he really feeds off of fastballs. When you speed it up at him, his counter punching is exceptional. Uh, Piznik is the rock. She's going to be the steady uh, player on the court. I believe she's got a little more consistency than Kacheva, but Kacheva's deadly as well. She's dangerous when she gets going. She's got a lot of firepower for a, for a, a right side player. So. This will be really interesting to see game two unfold. And here is the rock defensively, you called it. Yeah. yeah Emmerich just waiting to pounce, isn't he? Well, again, and if you're playing a right-handed player, first of all, the right-handed male is not even in that box most of the time, so that's unconventional. And then on top of that, Acevedo speeding it up to the left shoulder, which is right in the wheelhouse of Emmerich, and he's got a monster forehand. Zero three one. Important for Nico and Krista not to fall too far behind again. Look at the speed by Nico. But that will drift out. So I believe the keys to success in game two for Kacheva and Acevedo is they've got to find the backhand of Imrik and the forehand of Piznik. Uh, the backhand slice dink from Piznik is solid as could be, and the backhand from Imrik is not quite as dangerous. It's still deadly, but not quite as dangerous as his forehand. So they've got to figure out those key points here in game two and execute. Well, they found Emmerich's backhand on that point. It was a well-played point, though, Scott. It really was, and if you notice, they got high to the backhand of Emmerich, and all he did was slice it back cross-court to Gacheva. That's not a put-away shot. That's just kind of one of those you can play. So if he gives that to the forehand, it's over. So that's what I'm referring to when I say find the backhand. Right there, just like that. 3-1. Yeah, see how he comes Emmerich. over. Now, I I think his paddle fell into the kitchen, but I I could be wrong. But the ref did not call it, so we'll it just. It looked like it. Yeah. It did. It looked like yeah. he caught his balance right onto the kitchen line. But again, our job is to commentate, not to referee. So uh, she obviously did not see the same thing I did there. So a break there. Four one one. This Nick serving. I think a timeout would be in order here for Gacheva and Acevedo as they find themselves in a big hole. Mm, try to hit behind the cheating Emmerich, right idea, but difficult, high degree of difficulty, really. Well, yeah, that's, that's what I was talking about with her, is if she's on, those shots are going to be clean winners. Emmerich might not even get a paddle on that. But she goes for so much sometimes that she gives herself less of an opportunity to settle into points and, w and win those rallies. So she's just got to settle down. I think she's going for quite a bit there. She just needs to pull Emmerich back over. She doesn't have to hit a fantastic shot on that cross-court dink. Uh, but you definitely cannot leave the ball up in the middle with uh, Imrik's forehand right there. He has got tremendous, tremendous closing power. Uh, they've got to get the ball out wide to his backhand and then dink to the right foot of Piznik. Don't give her that rhythmic type of cross-court dinking with her backhand slice. But so far, Piznik and Imrik leading the charge. 11-3, 6-1. Oh, you can pick up our feed, by the way, Inside World Pickleball on YouTube, where you're probably at. Also at Pickleball Cards, pbcards.net. They're like baseball cards, but way more fun. And they're digital. They can feature you as well. 
Well, we got a double header for a couple of these competitors. Uh, Getcheva will be teaming up with Hurricane Tyra Black in women's pro doubles, and Tina Pisnik will be playing with another Emrick. Keep it, uh, you know, in the family. We go from Martin to wife Tammy. Well, it's interesting. Martin and Tammy started playing pickleball together, and now you see that they're playing with some different partners, which is probably smart for their marriage. <laughs> Pishnik was looking for the Ernie, and that may have distracted Getcheva a bit. I think so. I think she was trying to go to that spot down the line, and she ended up having to move it at the last second, which is a really smart decision from Pishnik to make that Ernie move. 7-1. Great reset from Piznik. Ooh, good uh, determination there. Acevedo gets you to hang on to that point. They needed that one. They had to hit a couple extra shots to get it done, but luckily for them, they were able to close that on the forehand error from Emmerich. Can Nico get more aggressive here, Scott? I think he has to. I don't think he has a choice. Kacheva not playing her best pickleball at the moment, and she's making some errant mistakes, but he's got to involve himself a little more. He's got to get a little more aggressive, I think, attacking Piznik. She just blocks. She volley blocks. She's not going to counter a lot of times, so he can use that athleticism. But when the ball is dropped into the kitchen like that, there's no attacking. Yeah, he's been stymied. It has been all Emrek Piznik. So he score over there. It uh, looks like it's nine to one. He he called a hold, so he's going to put Gacheva on the left, which could be a good change or it could prove to be not a good decision, depending on how this goes. But <laughs> worked out there. Yeah, she had a really nice aggressive dink, but interesting. So now they're going back to stacking, but Acevedo's got to get himself involved, like you talked about. Don't go to that forehand, that overhead. He, he's impeccable the way he can get so low, Scott. He turns balls that maybe you would have been chest shoulder high into overheads. Well, it's it's really, you're, you're right, it's really hard playing a guy like him because he leans into the ball and, and really takes a lot out of the air and puts pressure. He doesn't let a lot of those bounce, which if you've ever played somebody like that, it just creates a really tough environment. Let's it fly. Emmerich has had an outstanding run here this weekend. I think just the inexperience right now of Gacheva and Acevedo. Acevedo has really never played any major pickleball tournaments. He's a college student uh, focusing on his studies in tennis, uh, but he's really trying to dip his foot into the deep end and get accomplished um, pickleball results. But it doesn't happen overnight. You usually have to put your time in. And here's a match point. Uh, going towards that left hip. Well, again, that's a great shot because he has to set up on his backhand, and he caught him right in that left hip, like you said, area. If he puts that out wider to his forehand, he's probably going to hammer that for a winner. So good shot for Macevedo. Second chance at the match. And gold. This next so steady. And Nico landed at exceptional acceleration there. Now the reason he had success with that, I believe, is that Dink went out wide, and normally he would just catch that on a, a little backhand slice Dink, but he ended up taking topspin and rolling it, catching Emmerich and Piznik off guard. So really well done. So maybe a little bit of life here, 210, Acevedo serving. Second serve.
Kicheva really struggling to keep that ball in play at the moment against the pressure from Emmerich and Piznik. Oh, it just missed. It was a lovely attack there by Acevedo. For a minute, I thought it clipped off the yeah. end of Emmerich's paddle. I did too. I, you yeah. did too? Very I thought, close. Yeah, but apparently that thing just shooting out wide, but... Uh. <laughs> We have an umbrella in the stands. Oh, wow. Watch out. That was crazy. Yeah, that wind is whipping around in here. It literally pulled that out of the middle of the table and up onto the stands. That's pretty impressive. Well, don't forget, Scott, Hurricane Black is in the stadium. <laughs> so <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> she will be on court next playing with Krista Getcheva. That's fantastic. the match. Kacheva being really careful not to speed that ball up. There you go, Acevedo. That's a pat on the shoulder from his partner, Krista Getcheva. A little life there for both of them as they find themselves in a pretty big hole, but you never know with pickleball. Things can change around quickly. Got to get some stops here, though. That's too good from Gacheva and Acevedo. They move that ball around, really keeping their opponents off balance and on their heels in that one. But they're down quite a bit still. They've got to, they've got to string some stuff together here. This is, this is a do or die situation for them. Two ten one. Good to see them playing better though. This is a much better level. We've seen this throughout the tournament from these two. Good speed up. Definitely. Kacheva finally finding her rhythm as well. Dinking. She's putting that ball soft to the f left foot of Emmerich. So his forehand is deadly when you lift the ball up or attack it. When you keep it soft and low, he can't do much with it. So they're really on a good game plan, a good track right now. Oh, that's oh, too good. Oh, gorgeous. I think he fooled everybody in the stadium right there with that one. I, that landed. Yeah, it was good. Gorgeous forehand up the line, getting baseline. 4-10. Three unanswered. Crawling back in it. Wow, what a shot there from Kachava as she's finally dialed her shots in late in game two as they get halfway back up the ladder, cutting it in half to 10-5. Great effort, Masaveda and Kachava. No quit. They've done 10-1. It looked dismal, and they have really picked up their level. Good to see. Martin Emmerich will be playing again today. Men's Pro Doubles. He is paired up with Mike Forster, and they have been a force. Well, speaking of forces, they'll match up with uh, Ed and Lika and his partner, Brandon Hubschman. Yeah, I'm very familiar familiar with Ed and Lika, uh, Mike Forster, uh, all these guys. I, I've played with them and against them for, for many years now, and that's going to be an exciting men's pro finals here in Delray. I love to see these guys having success. You know, I, I've seen them struggle. I've seen them ha have great tournaments, but these guys are finally, I think, getting some breakthroughs, and it's really great to see these partnerships as well. I mean, Mike Forster, I've never seen him play with his partner before, but um, – Sometimes you just click. You just have uh, instant chemistry, and Emrick is one of those guys that is gonna, he's going to bring the energy. He's going to bring the, the, the pace, and I really think Mike Forster is a good complement to his game. 5-10-2. Acevedo, beautiful angling the Ernie. Those are the skills that have uh, people in the know in this area so high on this kid. Absolutely. You know, it's the finishing shot that gets the praise, but really that setup from the third shot on Gachava is what gave him that good opportunity, and he closed the deal. There's the 
forehand. Watch out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Couple of ahs and then the big yeah. You can see the veins popping out on his uh, <laughs> neck when he was hitting those. Really tremendous power like we talked about. And taking that Oso oh ball and just crushing it. And 6 1. Ooh, they caught a break as that ball got upstairs to Emmerich. Yeah, and the little smirk on Acevedo's yeah. face as he knew he got away with one. <laughs> Sometimes that can change things around. Though. You get a little break and you've got to capitalize. And there it is, a quick side out. All of a sudden, a couple points here. We've got uh, the, the pressure mounting. Yeah, that freight train that looked to be running away is now slowed down a bit, and Kachev and Acevedo have a small window to capitalize. that was going to come back and that ends up being out oh that's a tough one because Acevedo had the winner on his paddle he just missed I actually think he might have been going for Emery because he was shooting back across his lane to get back in position but boy that was a great point played out the the angle from Gacheva on that dink and mm -hmm. the two-handed two backhand from Emmerich on the round the post was sweet I think that was going to go in I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't either. <laughs> you know, I think the big reason that Acevedo and Gacheva are back in this game is the play from Gacheva has really elevated here late in game two, and they find themselves pushing hard to tie this thing up. They're down three. It was a nine-point deficit. Acevedo pushing. Piznik off that line, just looking for a small window to attack. Yeah, that's Piznik. She is a rock and an anchor. Yeah, it's actually interesting. She was the one that hit that with her forehand, but it's also the forehand of Emmerich. So that was that was really good defense through the middle. Interesting call here, Scott. Time out by the servers, up three. Yeah, I think that's smart. It's interesting for sure, but I've seen that now several times over the last, you know, few tournaments where the, the winning team just needs that 60 seconds to just keep themselves dialed in, keep themselves in check, uh, maybe firm up a couple last-minute game plans to finish out the match. It's 10-7. They gave away a 9-1 lead, like you said, so that's th that can be a little bit unnerving when you're, when you're – you know, you're up 9-1, and all of a sudden the other team starts pushing hard and getting back in it. What a lineup we have for you. We've got uh, the women's pro doubles. Right after this one, Krista Getcheva will be out here with Hurricane Tyra Black. Tina Pisnik will also stay on court, joining Tammy Emmerich. Hoping to wrap up gold with Tammy's husband, Martin, right here, 10-7. Ball on their paddle on first serve. We have some incredible talent here in the Delray area and these players coming from the east coast of Florida, west coast of Florida, and really all around the, the region and the, the greater U.S. But um, the competition is fierce. This, this pro level is getting better and better, and even some of these new names that we're seeing coming on scene are really making a big splash. It's great to see. For the match, Emrick <laughs> celebrates. A sweaty hug, nothing better. <laughs> <laughs> and terrific performance, 11-7 in the second. They wrap it up, but a nice comeback. Glad to see Acevedo and Getcheva start feeling their game and make it competitive. And uh, let's hear it. We're going to send it down to Carl now. He will present gold. So send it down to Carl Foster.
Okay, we're ready to go. It's a Mother's Day. We got the family out here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, our mixed doubles gold medals here at the third annual Delray Beach Pickleball Open. And let's first talk to our finalists, just uh, Krista. Just uh, good job out there today. You guys just talk about the, the tournament all week for you. And you, you're not done yet because you got to play some more. Yeah, I got one more event. Women's doubles coming up next. So I hope you all get <laughs> gold there. But um, they played amazing. And um, I mean, we didn't play our best, but honestly, they didn't let us. They played so well, we couldn't even play above our average. So well done, guys. You played awesome. Thanks a lot. Talk about playing mixed doubles out here in the stadium court, uh, championship Sunday. So it's got to be special for you as well. Yeah, well, um, it was my first tournament, so <laughs> it's it's very special. First yeah, yeah, first one ever. So congratulations, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and thanks, Krista, for the week. I mean, she carried me the whole week, so <laughs> I mean, the whole tournament. So. How about that? It's first tournament ever into the championship Sunday. That's pretty good. It's pretty strong. Look out for him coming up. And our gold medal champions. Let's talk to Tina first of all. We got the family here with Barton and Tina. Talk about playing together here today in the tournament all week. You guys still have some more work to do, also. Yeah, he's my pickable husband, but I don't want. <laughs> but yeah, we're having a good weekend. Um, it's our second tournament together, and um, pretty good. We finished gold, and hopefully, um, continue with Tammy, his wife, in the next match. <laughs> we always talk about. I always ask you out there: Is it good to play with your wife or not play with your wife? That's the question, the, the million-dollar question. If you want to stay married, is it better not to play with your wife? It's um. He happy Mother's Day, right happy Mother's Day, my love. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I'm saying. <laughs> no, I don't, I'm not. Oh, you say that, that's it, no comment. Okay, I don't want to put you on the spot there. All right, so this pres presentation is we have Kim Bagalow from Baptist Health, our presenting sponsor with our silver medals. There we go. We'll have the checks for you a little bit later. And our gold medal champions here, Tina and Martin. Oh, the ponytail. Does she want the medals? He want the medals. <laughs> And there's the future pickleball player right here, right? Yeah. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Oh. Okay. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Thank you very much. Coming up, ladies doubles next here on the center court in Delray Beach. Thank you. Let's get one picture with everybody. Well, thank you, Carl Foster and Kim Bokella of Baptist Health Medal presenter for us. And on deck now will be women's pro doubles. Getcha will be out, out there with Hurricane Black. Everybody's looking forward to see Hurricane play. And Tina Pisnick will return playing with Tammy Emmerich. We'll have that coming up for you momentarily.
We are back at the beautiful Delray Beach Tennis and Pickleball Center here at the third annual Delray Beach Pickleball Open presented by Baptist Health Championship Healthcare on Championship Sunday. Also Palm Beach County Sports Commission. And uh, this is a much anticipated, you know, big local flavor here, including the huge local attraction. That is the Hurricane, Tyra Black, playing with Krista Getcheva, Tina Pisnik, and Tammy Emmerich. I know you're excited about this one, Scott. Yeah, do you think it's an accident they're both wearing black outfits uh, during this match? I wonder <laughs> if that's coordinated on purpose. But, yeah, this is exciting. We just saw uh, Getcheva play against Pisnik. And uh, Pisnik got the better end of that deal. But this is a totally different matchup. Women's doubles is a totally different feel. And all these ladies come from a big background in tennis. I believe I believe all of them either played college or pro tennis. Uh, I know two of them for sure played on the WTA Tour. And uh, a little interesting fact about <coughs> Tyra Black. She's 22 years old, and she had a 63-29 and 29 tennis record which is a 68 percent winning percentage which is pretty fantastic for pro tennis i that's unbelievable that was in singles um and you know she had five itf titles in singles and two in doubles so she's very accomplished in her tennis but it's awesome awesome to see her transition over into pickleball and bring that fierceness and that fire to the pickleball scene um but these ladies on the other side are no easy match so we're going to have a fantastic play here on championship court ari and i are really looking forward to this one yeah we welcome hurricane with open arms to the sport of pickleball she is fun to watch her sister by the way and you were noting this as well uh <laughs> scott her nickname is tornado so she is alicia tornado sylvester black or sylvester their father their their fa father sly taught Coach tennis in the area. He was quite a player as well. He played um, doubles on the Jamaican Davis Cup team. And if you're wondering how they got those nicknames, um, at the age of three, uh, the dad nicknamed Tyra Hurricane and Tornado to the sister so they could be more marketable on the pro Genius. tour in tennis. Yeah. So I think that worked pretty well for them. It sure did. Hurricane also trained uh, with a famous coach, Rick Macy, in the area for years. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, this is about to kick off, Ari, and I could not be more excited. I always love watching women's doubles. It's one of my favorite matches to watch. Uh, they bring the fire. They bring the heat. They all have great two-handed backhands, and when it starts popping off, it is a sight to see. So really, really pumped about this one. And this is Carl's uh, favorite photo opportunity <laughs> <laughs> i guarantee you he's definitely gonna make that one number one. <laughs> that's going up on his office there in the dungeon below the bleachers hey when you run the tournament you can get that kind of uh situation there <laughs> beautiful women on each side of you love it well tina pisnik going for two consecutive golds here won it with martin emrick and now playing with Martin's wife, Tammy, on Mother's Day. Tammy's celebrating Mother's Day, by the way. Happy Mother's Day to all of you wonderful mothers out there. Literally, we wouldn't be here without you. <laughs> That's literally. <laughs> and Derek Prince, he's going to rep this one. Always good to see his presence out there. For everybody that's watching this matchup with us, pay attention to who is hitting drops and dinks and who's speeding the ball up. I, I have a feeling Gacheva and Black are going to be more aggressive. They're going to bring some pace, probably try to insert themselves early with some aggressive style of play, looking to drive and crash. And I would be willing to bet Pisnik and Emmerich are going to be a little more dialed into the drops and the dinks. They're going to try to control the points, drag the points out a little more, get to the kitchen line, and, and really put some pressure on those aggressive dinks, you know, the slice dink from Imrik and Pisnik. It's interesting. Tammy plays mixed with her husband on the left because he's a lefty. Now she's playing this right side role, which has a very specific job. So we're going to see if she can handle that right side as well as she handles the left. This side has been advantageous, hitting into the wind.
Nice first point. Is there an advantage, Scott, for the two players who've already played here on center court this more or just the previous match in Pisnik and Getcheva? Yes, definitely. They they have already played in on this court this morning, so they've got a feel for it. But also, I don't think it's probably an accident that Pisnik and Emmerich ended up on this side first. They probably won the toss and chose that side versus serving or receiving. So. Uh, this is interesting. I, I think they're stacking, possibly. Uh, Pisnik wants to be on the left. Yep, there's the switch sign. So they're going to keep Pisnik on the left with that backhand slice dink. Fighting it off, but can't get that one back. Well, the difference there, I, I noticed, is Black came off that kitchen line immediately as soon as she got into that firefight, where Emmerich felt completely comfortable sitting right there and gaining that edge, pushing Black off that line was the, the uh, difference in that point. Zero, one, two. Getcheva reaching over and attacking. I think that's how she would prefer the, the points to go. That ball getting attacked by her forehand and really being aggressive. That's where she really shines is her aggressive style of play. If she's on, she's really on. Can create a lot of problems for the opponent. Side out. Locked up at one. Yeah, watching these this pair play earlier it was interesting because Yecheva seemed like the more aggressive player playing with Hurricane. Seems to be true in this one as well, but it's interesting they've got Black playing on the left side and Gacheva playing on the right, which is interesting because normally the more aggressive, assertive player is going to be on the left, but, you know, they've talked about it, they've worked it out, and here we are. Gacheva attacking. One of the reasons you think Scott is her ability with that two-hander in the middle and her ability to go inside out with that shot or her dinks. Yes, for sure. She showed that in the mixed doubles. They got going late in that game, too, and we saw a little glimpse of that. But she's going to look to really dial in here in the women's doubles. She didn't have her best showing in the mix, but now she seems to be settled in pretty well. It's a low-scoring game so far, Ari. But maybe critical that she she's began to find her game late in that mixed. Black coming forward and Emmerich getting the best of that exchange. Yeah, Gacheva was sitting on that backhand again, but this is definitely I, I, I like this matchup. They've got Black playing straight across from Emmerich, which means that Emmerich's going to be dinking cross court with her forehand with Kacheva. Kacheva's forehand is deadly and very aggressive, so it'll be interesting if Emmerich can keep that ball down. Emmerich's game reminds me the most of Megan Fudge, who is a staple on the APP tour right now. They have very similar games. Good hustle. Black turning up the speed. So that's a trend we're going to see quite a bit through these matches between Black and Emmerich is Black's going to look to speed up and gain an advantage straight across. Uh, the hands from Emmerich are good, but I think Black keeps speeding those up because she feels like she can win a lot of those exchanges. Deuce is wild. And a side out. Well, we talked about the tennis prowess for the other participants, but we can't forget Tammy Emmerich. She played on the Belgian Fed Cup team, quite a performer in the sport as well. Point. 
point this is. Oh, that ball just. <laughs> Into the sign, and there goes the sign, and hopefully Tyra is okay. I think she actually used the sign to break her fall, which that was smart. She's not going to skin her knees up on that sign, but now we've got Lee Rosenthal coming to the rescue. <laughs> Good to see Tyra up in a hurry and okay, getting an ovation from the crowd. Good crowd on hand, particularly in the VIP section under the umbrellas, sitting comfortably in the shade, eating, drinking. Ball on court. So we'll do that over. Also, a number of fans up high in the seats out of your screen just finding shade in the upper rows here in the lower bowl. We keep talking about these former tennis players. Tina Piznik, a former professional tennis player out of Slovenia, she reached number 63 in the world back in April of 2000. So she is a very accomplished tennis player. Oh, black down again. It has been a rough start for Hurricane. A little slower this time, crashing into the net. Looks to be okay. A big standing ovation this time. She deserves it. Yeah, get back to Tina. Yeah, she played in the Miami Open here. Yeah, these, these ladies are very impressive. At the age of 42, she's now found a resurgence in pro pickleball, and she's loving it. And she has risen through the ranks very quickly, and there's no question as to why. Great D by Emmerich. And right down the Ave, Tyra Black. Two, three, two. Terrific exchange. And it was Black and Getcheva taking the main bracket. Pisnick and Emmerich came through the back 11 8, 11 9, defeating Nobler and Emery. And that match was late. And unfortunately, Nobler was injured in that final. She's going to be okay, but unable to play the women's singles final here today. And that would have been against Hurricane Black. So disappointed fans. I'm sure Black's disappointed as well as Nobler. They're fierce competitors. They want to compete at every opportunity they can, but. What a save. Well, that was a great get from Pisnik. The reset. And Black goes right at the body to finish it. So Emmerich keeps speeding that forehand up through the middle cross court right into the backhand trap of Gacheva, and she is just teeing off. She's absolutely wearing that shot out. Five two two. Driving that into the net. She was a couple feet behind that 22-foot baseline. Two five one. Misdirection goes wide. Well, you know that is going to be a, an unbelievable shot if she can nail that. But she just went for way too much. I don't even think she needed to be that fantastic with the shot. She really probably should have rolled that when she went kind of a swipe across it. Um, but man, if she lands that, that's going to be a crazy shot. Well done. The precision from Pisnik and Emmerich, the difference so far, they've not made a lot of unforced errors. And right down the Ave again, she has found that gap. Hurricane has, rolling through the court. And 
We're tied. Five all. Points hard to come by the receiving team, doing a great job keeping pressure on the serving team, keeping them off that kitchen line. And Tyra Black showing what kind of range and skills that she possesses out there at the kitchen line. Pisnik able to finish. How would you evaluate Black's game? Still new to the sport of pickleball. <laughs> it's just crazy. She's better in the first six months of playing than I was in the first three <laughs> years. But, you know, she's, she's definitely getting better each time she steps on the court. And there's a learning curve, but she's speeding up that learning curve by getting into these gold medal matches and really getting exposure to this higher level of play. There's that hand and wrist strength. I, I wonder if her sister's playing any pickleball. I'd love That's to see question. them yeah. team up at some point if she does play. That would be fantastic to watch. How do you defeat a hurricane and a, a tornado on the same court? <laughs> <laughs> I just can't <laughs> see it happening. Recovery speed. Well, that slide. Yeah, <laughs> that shows you what she what she's like as far as um, her decision making. She slid in there, and instead of trying to reset that ball soft, she just fires off into <laughs> the core of Emmerich. Yeah, that that takes some athletic ability. Again, they yeah. they've got to change that pattern. Emmerich is speeding up cross court right into the backhand of. Gacheva, and she's winning. Gacheva's winning almost all of those exchanges when they hit to her backhand there. 8-5-2. Equaling the largest lead of this game. That sails deep. Skipping through the legs of Krista. So timeout, Piznik and Emmerich. They trail 9-5 to five in the first a quick break be back Nine five two out of the timeout. Oh, that is dangerous. That uh, gets you about backhand, get warmed up, softening up the opponents, and then black closing. at the defense. Oh. oh, it takes that to finish the point. <laughs> at 11-5, as Getchava apologizes. Exciting stuff, though, and we will have more to come in the second game from the third annual Delray Beach Pickleball Open Women's Pro Doubles.
Derek Prince says, let's begin game two. Nemrick and Pisnik fell 11-5 in the first. So they will need to win three straight to take gold. These two to 11 and then a 15-pointer. Work to do. One at a time, right, Scott? <laughs> That's right. You can only take it one at a time. And I see why the undefeated team, though, is Black and Gacheva. They complement each other very well. And Gacheva playing that right side to perfection so far, at least in game one. A few side outs. No score yet here in the second. Well, you're doing a little homework, Scott. You saw that uh, her sister is playing some ball, huh? Yes. Apparently, she is in the tournament. She chose to play the 5.0 division She, as she's probably still newer to pickleball. Oh, what a point. So we may get the opportunity to see a hurricane and tornado on the court at the same time shortly. Nice cut drop there by Pisnik. Similar to the first game where points were difficult, particularly at the start. And that's why, that kind of defense. That's right. And now the reset. <laughs> Remarkable. So early in game two, I've already seen a difference in the way Emmerich is playing. She's starting to insert herself and be a little more aggressive at the kitchen. She was playing that really conservative, just drop and dink type of mentality I was talking about. But now she's finding creative ways to get involved and really push the pace a little more because what they did in game one didn't work. I definitely thought that ball was in. I didn't see a call made. I, I think they called it out. And I, that, that I'm, I'm gonna go with that was not not a correct call there. But no no uh, argument from Tyra Black there. Very good time to punch that. Well, again, she's speeding that up. In game one, she was just taking that ball out of the air and going back cross court with the dink. Now she's going inside out, attacking the body of Black across the net from her. So we're seeing a big difference, and this might be the reason that Piznik and Imrik find themselves up 3-0 in game two already. That's what they call a lift in volleyball, I think. <laughs> <laughs> the lift shot is probably not legal in pickleball. She tried to throw it back over like high lie. Yeah. Zero, three, one. Deep. Tyra walks it all the way to the ground there. Second serve, one, three, two. Interesting that. The near side and the wind has been the favorable side throughout the day, although Black and Getcheva winning on the far side in the first. I 
right back in it. Did she get out of the way? She did. She <laughs> did, and she's got her hair tied up in uh, a ponytail, so it avoided hitting her hair. But, yeah, that was a good attack from Emmerich. I think she just went for the body, and Tyra Black was ready for that one. Yeah, big crowd on hand to see Hurricane play. We're tied now at three. Look at that recovery speed. Quite a point. Yeah, they're really exploiting Kachava's dinking right now. She ultimately lifted that one up from the left side. She's been playing the right the whole time, and now you know she gets shifted over to the left, maybe not quite as comfortable on that side, so she's putting herself back over on the right. That one comes up shy. Second serve. Tied at three. Emmerich all over it. You, you really can't get a better setup. She was sitting on that two-handed backhand counter, just dumped it. Yeah, Black looking back, wondering if that would have floated out. It may have. But then again, you don't want to take that yeah. chance, right? Because once it's by you, it's it's out of your control. So I like that you went for it. It's not a clean shot. That's Nick to put away. Kacheva getting that last one over the net just a little wide from the kitchen. Great attack from Piznik as she was patient enough to get that pop up. See the score over there, Scott? Yeah, blocked by this umbrella. 4-3, Four. Four, but it's interesting because the side that was earlier the advantage for the teams is now turned into the side that. So 4-3-2. It's tougher. That's a tough ball right at the feet of Emmerich, which she started her break forward as well, but nowhere to go. We don't see the two-handed backhand from uh, Tyra. Yeah, it appears that she loves that one-hander, and I'd love to know in tennis if she hit a one-handed or a two-handed backhand. I, I don't know that offhand, but... Interesting, she's going with the one-handed pickleball. Good ball to attack. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Emmerich's getting the looks that she wants. She's just a little early, possibly, or she's just a little excited on those and maybe getting out too far in front of it. The ball hangs for Getcheva, and she didn't miss it. Yeah, she's really dangerous when she can hit that inside-out forehand 
or go cross court. Really, she had options there, and she took full advantage of that ball that hung up. Oh, what a battle there. She didn't miss that one, did oh. she, Ari? <laughs> Determination. And then a big smile, because she knows she's missed a couple ones that, that she was a little timid on, maybe. And that time, she was not going to take no for an answer. Nothing like that sweet, solid contact, right? I don't know that feeling personally, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to feel great. I imagine it does. Some uncharacteristic mistakes from Emrick. I also see she has a, I don't know if it's an injury or a strain on her right leg. I don't know if that's affecting her gameplay at all. Not at all. You see that shot she just <laughs> <hit>? <laughs> Clearly I'm wrong on that. The one thing I, I really like about her demeanor, she's always smiling. You know, yeah. she's always a good, good composure and demeanor. Really goes a long way. Big rip there. Not able still to smiling. <laughs> yeah, still <laughs> smiling, but not able to step into that two-handed backhand like she really wanted to. She was a little flat-footed. It is Mother's Day. She should be smiling. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> her young daughter was out there to congratulate her husband, Emmerich, uh, Martin Emmerich. That is wide. Kacheva with a nice attack to the left shoulder of Piznik. Again, Piznik's more of a block type of player she likes to block those instead of counter so if you can get the upper hand on those that's going to be a, a good advantage for Kacheva being straight across looks like it's 7-4 in favor of Kacheva and Black and first serve they had trailed 3-0 in this game and smart leave there by Tina but that was a heat check for Gacheva. She yeah. started kind of feeling it a little bit. That's like a, a guy shooting from 34 feet away in basketball, you know, after he's made, made a couple of threes. Oh, sensational one-two punch. Nice angle by Black. Yeah, the one thing I'm liking about her game, I've never really sat in, and watched her play a full match, and I'm really loving it. She keeps the paddle out in front of her body and short, quick bursts with her swings. She doesn't take a big back swing, and I, I think she's got good coaching in that regard because coming over, over from tennis, you usually see them have bigger swings initially, so really good adjustment from her. Yeah, good point. You see a, a number of the former tennis players – do try to do too much, too much power here. She's really uh, composed out there. Yeah, the quickness at the hand, with the hand speed at the net is pivotal in your progression coming over from tennis. I will say too, the weather's changed a little bit. I think the wind has also changed. So earlier in the matches, we were seeing um, the wind kind of going straight line into into the face of the the opponents closest to us. Um, and, and away from the middle of those uh, the tennis uh, net. But now uh, it, it's it's swirling. It's not staying consistent. It, right now, currently, it's blowing into their face still. But earlier, I noticed it was blowing the other direction. So that's an interesting dynamic that we're going to keep an eye on uh, as this match continues to unfold in front of us. Yeah, more of an easterly f flow off of the ocean, but a little bit from the north. Yeah, that affects play. It really does. You can't always tell on video, um, but these players definitely feel that wind as it starts to swirl or change. So, Timeout. Effective. They get the ball back. Trailing by four here. Do or die. They need a comeback. They're losing the first 11-5. Lands it in the corner, sensational. Oh, that's such good touch from Emmerich. She, did you notice, Ari, she reset that exchange. She fired off on Black straight across, lost the advantage, reset cross court to Gacheva, and then when she finally got the right shot, she went inside out down the line. Beautiful execution.
Pisnik covering that oh, middle well. What a get. And then Hembrick finishes. That is the flow that you want to see as a partnership, covering each other's backside, sliding when the ball is on the opposite side of you, covering that middle. And then when, when they start getting this groove, watch out because they've closed the gap to just two now. 6-8. Second serve. I think Emmerich a little indecisive. She might have wanted to drive that short return and then changed her shot selection at the last second. A tough ball. Just in, uh, one step inside of the baseline, and Black has found her feet a couple times there. Tested Pisnik down the, the line, and Tina was ready for it. That one gets away from Tyra. These next few points are going to say a lot about the way this game is going to end in game two. Imrik and Pisnik have got to stay dialed into their game plan. Emmerich's got to stay aggressive, attacking straight across. Yeah, there, you, there it is. That's what you called for. Yeah, they're they're being patient just long enough to get the ball that they want to attack and. They're taking full advantage of it right now. It's 7-8, and they really, I feel like the momentum swung back in their favor. They know their back's against the wall, and oftentimes you see that team really get into a laser focus down the stretch. And since that timeout, when they were trailing 4-8, and now a break, and we are tied, so do we get a timeout for the other team? Late in game two, it's been all Emmerich and Pisnik, and they are high-fiving and really playing their best pickleball right now as they need to. Eight all for serve. They elect not to take a timeout. Now that's why. They know what they're doing. Yeah, but I still think you're you're on with that. Once a team kind of brings back that momentum and it's 8-8, eight, eight, I, I like that timeout call, but they choose to play through it. <laughs> yeah, well, you win some and you lose some, but but yeah, that that's good defense from them. They got two stops and and the ball back. Wind gusting up now. Now this is going to be a big point, Scott. We are locked up at eight. They have been stuck on eight for a while. Second serve here. Yeah, and Gacheva getting a little tight on those forehand dinks. Emmerich looking a lot more relaxed and composed here in game two. So. And they get it back with an opportunity to take the lead. It'll be their first of this game, too. You know, one of the pivotal shots that I think changed things for Emmerich was that two-handed backhand finish that we saw in the exchange earlier in this match. It really got her going. The wind blowing, and did that drop in? Didn't see a call made. Looks like they called it out. It, that looked like it was going to be a foot in, and then the wind started blowing, and it took off. Second serve at 8-8. Eight, eight. Black gets it back. Back in black. So they haven't gotten off of eight for a while. 
but they've been holding at eight. So the the other team got to eight, and then they've had back to back stops without any points from Piznik and Emmerich. So this is a good sign for them to be able to close out game two. But oh, a little help from the net after all that. That's a risky shot because Tyra Black stepped into that two-handed rip. And so what I, what I was seeing is she she actually does have a two-handed shot too. She uses the the one-handed dink when she's up there, but she has a two-handed drive from the baseline. It looks like. Oh, finally, they get off eight, and oh, I tell you, Pisnik, everything comes back from her paddle, doesn't it? It does, and, you know, I thought they gained that momentum back during the middle of that point, and we're going to try to you get that second stop without any points, but Black and Gacheva doing a lot with the offensive shots they got right there. Nine, eight. The wind may knock that down. It does. And... Aiding that lob from Tyra. She knows what she's doing, Hurricane does. 10-8. We have a match point all of a sudden. I'm wondering if they'll call a timeout. Looks like they're going to play through it. And she pegs her. Wow. Wait, and she's new to pickleball? <laughs> I know. That's just... <laughs> crazy to watch her be so composed she took and fired off on that ball when you're up 8 10 or 10 8 in the second game and won the first game 11 5 you can take risk like that and she hit the right elbow of emmerich to finish off the women's open pro championship yeah, what an entertaining match and the crowd bobbed it a really terrific play krista getcheva Hurricane Tyra Black taking gold in Women Pro doubles as they defeat the quality team of Tina Pisnik and Tammy Emmerich. And Carl Foster will have the interview coming up in a moment. We will have men's pro doubles. Tammy's husband, Mark, will be back on court with Mike Forster against Ed and Lika and Brandon Hubschman. And for now, we will send it down courtside for the trophy presentation. We've got Kim Bocala from Baptist Health uh, presenting the medal along with, of course, Carl Foster. Beach Pickleball Open, our third annual event, and let's talk to our silver medalists here first, uh, Tammy and Tina, getting going out there today. Talk about the, the week for you overall and uh, ending up here on Mother's Day with the, with the silver medal. Yeah, um, we're really happy. Thank you to everyone for coming out today. Um, we really appreciate it. We try to get back in in the second. Um, they played a great match, so congrats to both of them. Um, it's been a nice weekend. <laughs> um, thank you to my partner. Uh, we've been partners since day one in Pickleball, and uh, we're getting closer to getting gold in these bigger events. So we're really happy and uh, it's just the beginning for us. We've only been playing about six months. Um, happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm the only mom on the court. So <laughs> um, it's a cool feeling and a uh, big shout out to Maya. 
Um, without Maya, she watches my two-year-old for me uh, every single day when we're playing pickleball. So without you, nothing would be possible in pickleball. So thank you, Maya. You're, you're the best. And uh, my husband uh, doing his thing in the background. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and our parents are probably watching on the live stream. So we hi to them. And yeah, um, we look forward to coming back next year. Great. Thanks for coming this year. And Tina, talk about it. You've had a great run this week as well in, in playing some doubles. And talk about the tournament. I think Tammy covered everything. But <laughs> congrats, guys. Thanks for coming out, everyone. Happy Mother's Day. And um, yeah, Maya is the beast. Um, and we'll be back stronger next time. Great playing all week long, ladies. And we have Mike from Tyrol, our official shoe, to give you your silver medals. We'll have your check for you in a few minutes. We're going to be writing a few for you. We've been playing a couple couple times out here. Our gold medal winners, I think, for the first time on the, on the stadium court. Gold medal. I'm, do you have any gold medals yet on the ch on a championship court, Krista? Well, I got silver in the previous one. And silver, not gold, though. Right. So now it's my first gold here. Yeah. You're making a clean sweep today. Gold, silver. You can play one more for a bronze, maybe. Maybe, yeah. Uh, talk about playing with. Uh, you know, was this your first tournament you played together? This is our first tournament together, and um, I think we had really good chemistry. I had a blast playing with her, and. Um, yeah, hopefully we'll have some more down the line. Well, good start there for sure. And I know it's your first time, championship court. You already won the women's singles. So let everybody know she's the women's singles champion because her opponent couldn't play today, but so she had just a great run in singles, uh, Tyra, and also now goals. So you've got two goals in your, your first event here in Delray Beach, and I know you're, you're local South Florida, so you have a lot of friends and family around. So congratulations on a great uh, debut. Hey, thank you everyone for coming out. Thank you to all the volunteers and referees and everyone. Um, it's been an amazing tournament. It's great winning in my hometown and where I train every single day. <laughs> um, but they played a great match. Me and Krista played amazing together. We had great chemistry for our first tournament together and um, hopefully we'll be back next year. <laughs> Congratulations, uh, we have your gold medals. From Cam from Baptist Health, our presenting sponsor. Kim, and we'll get a we'll get a group picture here. So thank you very much. And uh, men's doubles coming up in just a few minutes. So we're gonna get a get a group picture here with uh, with Belinda over here.
Thank you for tuning in, everybody, Inside World Pickleball here on YouTube. You can also catch us on uh, Pickleball Cards, pbcards.net, streaming. And we've got uh, men's pro doubles, Mike Forster, Martin Emmerich. They were the front jaw finalists, and they will take up against Ed and Lika, Brandon Hubschman, who made it through the back with a three-set victory over the on-scenes father and son team in an exciting match. Yeah, this should be a good one. A lot of firepower out here, Scott. Yeah, really looking forward to this men's doubles final. You've got two locals in Ed and Lika and Brandon Hubschman. I, they don't play together all that much in tournaments, but they're very familiar with one another. Lots of rec games locally, and uh, I think they complement each other. Brandon, Brandon Hubschman, if you've never played against him, he has very deceptive shots. You think he's going to go to your right hip, he's hitting to your left. You think he's going to go down the middle, he's going out wide. So he has a very dynamic game, very tall, athletic, rangy, uh, and uses that range really effectively. Edin Lika, uh, 6'5", 240, Romanian, played pro tennis. Uh, I would say a, a, a guy who is really coming into his own in pickleball. He's taken some time to develop and to really become a, a well-rounded pickleball player. He's going to be the rock. Brandon Hubschman is going to be the, the X factor for their team. On the flip side, you've got Mike Forrester that possesses a big forehand drive, nice touch on his dinks. And then, of course, Martin Emmerich, the lefty powerhouse that we saw earlier win in mixed doubles in two. Uh, you, you, if you saw him play, you do not want to leave it up to his forehand either. Uh, crazy fast hands at the net. Likes the fast exchanges. He really invites that. He's not going to shy away from those. Uh, and I'm going to be interested to see head-to-head -head collision between Emmerich and Lika. As Lika's not known to have slow hands by any means, but that was one of the things that I, I think he's really worked hard to improve is those hands battles up at the net. Uh, but he's going to look to go cross-court with Forrester and, and gain that edge deking cross-court. Great analysis. Scott Golden. And we are underway. And Forrester, what we've seen through from him in this tournament is phenomenal hands. Oh, yes. And touch, I might say. And then there you go. Broadcaster Jenk never <laughs> fails. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> and fans. Going for the Ernie, that one dropped a little bit on Martin. What's interesting too is these partnerships. Ed and Lika played high level tennis. Emric also high level tennis. Hubschman and Forrester, no tennis. So neither one of those guys played any real tennis. So fun to watch this matchup. Yeah, Hubschman coming from a baseball background. And just a pure athlete. You can just look yeah. at him and know he's a he's a stud on and off the court. Does all the graphic design for Selkirk. I don't know if you were aware of that, but he's multi-talented. Yeah, he's a great graphic designer. Really made a name for himself inside pickleball with that as well. Yeah, Emmerich says I'll take that overhead. Yeah, but that missed. That Did went out really? wide, and Eden calling it quick enough to uh, hmm. to be confident. I thought it was wide as well, but really a good overhead just to get loosened up. Punched in deep up the middle by Forster. Got some unique paddle companies in this final too. Holbrook, Pickleball, signing Emrick recently, and the local company Phantom signing Edelika. Ooh, very close. Good read there by Emmerich. Yeah, but if, if Lika gets that in, uh, any idea that ball was coming down the right side alley? Just missed wide, but he'll come back to that, I'm sure. Here comes Emmerich attacking. 
That goes in, and it's saved. Oh, oh my gosh. I don't know how he even got to that ball. <laughs> what a point. What a get. <laughs> Amrick showcasing that quick feet. One, two, two. Make it two, two, two. Dropped on Eden a bit. Well, you mentioned the uh, kind of the outfit for Mike Forrester. Uh, it look, does look like he just arrived back from the beach, which is only a mile away. Yeah, I felt like he was surfing earlier <laughs> before the finals. He's got that type of personality, too. Very chill, very relaxed. Loves to compete, though. Terrific defense into offense. Felt like Lika may have been setting up. He's gone with the forehand up the line on that when he starts running around the forehand cross court dinks, but I believe Emmerich was looking for it. He's, he's read the scouting report. He definitely read the scouting report. And so notice how Forster does not continue to dink cross-court backhands with Ed and Lika. That's Eden's specialty. Just dinking, keeping the ball unattackable. So Forrester is immediately moving the ball over to Brandon Hupshin straight across. That's a pattern we're probably going to see unfolding here in this game one, just to point that out. And that gets the big body of Lika. Well, and you know, I mentioned that that exchange straight across between Emmerich and, and Lika. That is hands down in the favor of Emmerich as his hands are lightning fast. And there he proved it as he hits that body shot right into the right shoulder of Lika. So 6-2, to two, we get a timeout for Lika Hubschman. Now this tandem of Martin Emmerich and Mike Forster, they have been phenomenal. Really, as you mentioned, an interesting pair and working in sync together throughout the week. Don't believe that they have dropped a game yet. Uh, they did to um, the Unseens. They lost that first one to Eric and Jaime, but then bounced back 11-3, 11-3. You talk about making a statement in game two and three. Yeah. Sometimes you just come out against a team you may n never have faced before. You need that game one just to make some assessments. And then they obviously made those adjustments and played much better. Taking that 11-3, 11-3 is quite a statement for sure. And that's why they find themselves in Championship Sunday. 6-2-1. And that unseen doubles pair was fun to watch. Father's son. A lot of length and talent there. Edden surprise, he kind of blocked it back, but went behind him. Yeah, it was a tough call, close, but I thought that ball did go a little long. Edden, really good sportsman out there. You certainly don't want to make him mad. <laughs> <laughs> he's a, he's definitely a gentle giant, but boy, if you get on, yeah, if you get on his bad side, it looks like he's wearing uh, you know heavyweight boxer shorts too, with the going to the ring with those shorts. If I tried to put those on, I'd look like I was had a parachute <laughs> and ready to jump out of a plane. Well, Forster's done that a couple times. He's got such control with that backhand flip. It's one of his better shots. He likes to really roll top spin on forehand and backhand. Championship shot. Emrick with the touch. If if Hubschman doesn't even go for that one, you know it's a good shot because he took one half step and stopped. Deep ball by Hubschman. 
Lika and Hubschman still trying to find their footing here in game one. They're down five. Still trying to get their identity figured out for this first game. Forster really looking confident. I, I said he was trying to go away from that dink, but that time he looked like he was in control. But when you're up, you know, 8-2, you feel that confidence a little bit more. You can make some oh. more aggressive moves and bold statements there. So Break for Hubschman and Lika there. Let's see if they can turn it into points. Hubschman with the reach. Three eight one. Yeah, I did get a piece of Hubschman. Oh wow, that he let that go on intentionally, and that ball clipped him, I think, just a little. Yeah. Ball just kept drifting away from the battle of Emmert. Cross-court backhand volley is so good. Yeah, I mean, Forrester's not letting those bounce. He's not letting the, the ball dictate him. He's he's really taking control and leaning into those. So no wonder he hit the feet of Lika. And then goes with a forehand put away. The body language so far from Lika and Hushman is that of, we're not awake yet. We're not going <laughs> yet. Uh, they're, they're still trying to figure it out. Interesting, they're they're playing Lika quite a bit. And that landed in. <laughs> you can see the frustration. Again, you're hitting the ball to that direction. The wind's going to help die the shot down. Yeah, I mean, Hubschman's look of dismay as both those shots went in. Emmerich finishing the game. Well, that's definitely where he shines. That forehand, he, he, he crosses over that middle line and really just whips that ball. Both forehands from Forrester and Emmerich are going to be dangerous when the ball is lifted up. 11-4. So Forrester and Emmerich all over Leek and Hubschman in the first. We'll see what the response is. We'll be back. What if I showed you a new way to view wellness through the lens of nature in its purest form? At Splish Naturals, we believe that everyone deserves wellness. We have one line of products that can help your body in countless different ways. Name your pain. It can all vanish in minutes if you know what your body needs to protect it. Our products are unlike anything you've seen before. The intersection where nature strengthens performance. It's your body and you only get one. So ask yourself, am I gonna protect it? Question, what do you need most when you're on the court? Is it stability, breathability, comfort, or support? Well, now it doesn't have to be either or. Footwear designed by pickleball players for pickleball players. Introducing the Striker Pro V by Tyrol. Available at TyrolPickleball.com.
Welcome back, everybody. Third annual Delray Beach Pickleball Open presented by Baptist Health, Palm Beach County Sports Commission, hosted by the Foster Events Group. All right, coming out of the uh, game one timeout, and Scott, you had some advice that you thought might help the Lika Hubschman side. We'll talk about it in a moment. Yeah, I was just saying if I was in their corner as their coach, I would put Brandon on the left to start game two just early to see if those adjustments um, can be made. And, and Brandon's very dynamic when he's on the left side, so we'll see if that makes a difference here early in game two. Well, there you go. Yeah, and also one other thing I want to point out is Ed and Lika is used to playing the right side with Andre Diascu, the other Romanian who's playing on the APP tour right now. Um, and Brandon is really good on the left side dinking with his slicing dink. So we'll see if this plays out. Oh, boy, he's selling it. Yeah, he was trying. I, I, did, I didn't think it, uh, it came in. I didn't it think it made it either. Guy, yeah. It's their it call. It was close. Yeah, yeah, definitely close. Ref telling Lika he wasn't able to see it clearly. It was a good sell. I wouldn't have disagreed with him. <laughs> uh, they need need to sell it in game two, right? They've already lost game one, so why not? Well, he gets it back. Down one. I, I think this is, we're going to see a positive improvement from game one to game two just by this strategy change up. Putting Brandon on the left I think is a good decision. Finding that center line again, Mike Forster. That is a very crafty and creative shot. That ball was below the net a good bit, and he just flicked it with his forehand. The wind gusting up, and Lika was not bothered by it. No, and the drop from Hubschman didn't seem to be affected too much either. Hubschman read it. He had that center line covered, Scott. Definitely. Uh, the dink cross court from Emmerich is what pulled Lika out wide. And when he went down the line, he just popped it up. Hubschman was trying to bail them out. but Lika was setting up for it, but Forster's ball pushed him even more out wide than I think he hoped. Yeah, Lika looking to hit a lot of forehands, working around that backhand. Like that strategy, he's got some offensive weapons off of that shot, but. Boy, the weather really changing here. The wind blowing a little heavier than we've seen in the last few matches. One, two, one. Brandon got the shot that he thought he could attack. I guess it, it died just a little. I still like Brandon being on the left. I think he's going to be able to create some offensive opportunities for them. That ball upstairs for Emmerich. Well, first of all, I didn't really 
think that Lika should have been working around that middle shot to hit a forehand because he pulled himself out of position. And then if you don't hit the perfect shot, you're definitely in trouble. Going for the rip. Flew deep. Second serve. Yeah, Emmerich really pushing that firepower, beating up a game and feeling good. He's bouncing around. So a couple of mistakes. Opportunity for Humpschman and Lika. Terrific patience. Yeah, definitely he waited till Lika popped that one up and then just hit the kneecap of Hubschman straight across. You heard Emmerich say nope. Yeah, Brandon trying to just create. That's one of his attributes. I think he creates offensive shots that aren't there sometimes but right now he's looking a little flustered because those shots aren't going in but he's got to stay consistent with that look to create some like that get some better opportunities to push pace and and really use his athleticism locked on this 2-1 score Lika on to the next courts. When you've got a 6'4", 240-pound frame, you can just hammer that ball through the middle like that. You know, they're, they're not scoring. Hubschman and Lika have not been scoring a lot early in game two, but the good news is they haven't allowed Emmerich and Forrester to run away with this game two either. It's still a very close match early, and there's a lot of game to be played, but... They've got to find some ways to, to get ahead and get a lead so they can just relax a little, maybe breathe a little bit. They have literally been behind in every uh, game so far, or every point so far they've been trailing. And again, struggling to put those points up on the scoreboard. That's a credit to Forrester and Emmerich, too. They're just a defensive machine over there, plus they both possess strong forehands and, and some power. Yeah. That's a good drop there from Forster. He's got such great control. Must be the no sleeves giving him all that <laughs> control. <laughs> what do you think, Ari? I guess we could try it. <laughs> oh, pretty. That is a high-level shot right there as Imrick was looking to poach with that forehand. He gives the thumb up to Lika like, hey, man, you got me on that good. one. Ooh, tricky attempt. Yeah. Well, I, I talked about this in the clinic that I taught this weekend. The, the around the post needs to go out parallel with the kitchen line. That one had too much depth on it. So when he tried to go around the post, he couldn't. He didn't have the angle there. Emmerich ready for that inside out spin to the baseline. This time had it covered. Timeout as jumping to, is it five now, Scott? Do you see under that it umbrella? It is, five one. five one. It was two one for a good while, so they explode for three. That's a good timeout. They they know in the back of their mind they have to keep this game close. They cannot let Emmerich and Forrester run away with it. I just everything they've been trying has not not had a ton of success so far in game one or game two. There you can see that they're trying to put the pieces of the puzzle together, 
uh, a little more in game two. Game one, they looked like they just weren't in, th in the flow. They're, they're finding it a little, but they're, they're offensively, they're just not able to get any kind of edge. Martin Emmerich looking for his second gold of the day. Team with Tina Pisnick for gold in mixed. Well, there was $30,000 in prize money at this tournament to be given away, and Emmerich's trying to get his piece of the pie. Getting two golds and some cash would be a really nice ending to his Sunday. Five, one, two. Reset. Oh, Hobschman had it measured. He definitely got the counter abilities lined up, but then he just dumped it in the net. But yeah, he he did everything right there. The wind won't help that one. Just nothing working so far for them. The, the counters have been coming back strong from Forster and Emmerich. 7-1-2. And it's Forster putting it away. They are feeling it over there. A lot of energy, positive body language. Forster looking really strong on that left side. This is, I meant to mention this earlier, but I like this matchup because Forster really prefers to play the left side. And when you play with a lefty, you get to play that left side the whole time. So he's very comfortable. Fights that one off. Just tremendous defense as well. They have put a wall up. They have given very few windows of opportunity for Lika and Hushman to get back in this game too. Could finally gets a side out, but they trail by eight. That's a nice counter from Hubschman. Once he gets going like that, he can really do a lot of damage. He's just got to find a way to keep being offensive when he gets the right opportunities and executing. That one was deep. This is the second time we've seen a team get down big in that game two and then start roaring back and, and create some momentum for themselves. But sometimes it's too little too late. It's 9-3 it's three or 3-9. Three Oh, beautiful by Lika. Sees that separation there. I feel like he was looking for that shot earlier when he was working around that backhand dink and going cross court. And that time he pulled the trigger in the right moment and forcing a timeout. Coming back. 4 9. We'll be back shortly.
out of the timeout at 4-9. Still on the first serve. Three straight points for Lika and Hupschman trying to climb back in this one. We'll go to the second serve. Timeout does often. Nine four one Forster. Hamrick <laughs> a big yeah. This time he uses the backhand punch. And we have ourselves a match point. Set. My goodness. Oh what a boy. point. What a way to end it. Sensational. Uh, we've had two of these games end with some exciting fireworks at the end. Fantastic play from Forrester and Emmerich to finish it off. Boy, they had very few weaknesses in that final eight there. Yeah, they, they're very impressive, Scott. I think they may want to keep this, this group here, this tandem together. Yeah, Forster, kind of a local guy, uh, about an hour and a half north of Delray, but uh, he doesn't travel a ton. But boy, they might—he might need to talk him into quitting his full-time job and right. going on the tour with Martin Emmerich. Gold for Emmerich again, two golds, and here comes his daughter for the celebratory hug. Sensational for Martin Emmerich, Mike Forster. They were terrific throughout. 11-4, 11-4 over a good Lika and Hubschman team. We'll join Carl now courtside. Whenever you're ready, we'll come up and do our presentations. All right, our men's doubles gold medal championship on Championship Sunday, the third annual Delray Beach Pickleball Open, and uh, what a great finale. Some hard hitters out here. We got a couple local favorites here that teach in the area, but uh, our, our goal today, the Emmerich family, I'm gonna, now I was told to write one check to Tammy. His winnings go to her. She said, right. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. She said it was a joint account, so, but she said, just write it to me. It's, uh, uh, I'll it's Mother's Day, right? You take it. All right, well, good playing out here today, so you had a great tournament. Talk about the week for you, you and your family. Well, obviously for the Ambridge family, it was a crazy success. And um, even with Tina, um, for her in doubles there, mixed with me, we are, we are one practice team. So three months ago, we decided to turn pro and give it an actual shot for this year. And if this is the outcome, I think we go in the right direction. So a uh, shout out to our coach, Dom Catalano. Thanks to Horbrook for if I, uh, just raising my game with this. And then I'm on a blind date with him. I think, I, I think I'm going to go on another date with him. You passed the audition, Mike, so pretty good there. Blind date, you pick up gold, so good job. 
Thank God. Yeah, he carried me through it, man. I just had to be solid and let him be big in the middle, and he got really aggressive, which is, that's what, that's what his role is. That's what he needs to do. And low. Uh, his hands are lightning, so I just kind of wanted to keep solid for him and let him do his thing. All right, well, we'll present the uh, gold medals from Baptist Health and Kim, our presenting sponsor. Good job, guys. And wanted to save our local favorites here. We know these guys well. They teach in the area. They play a lot of tournaments, and I'm always glad to have them out here with a hometown crowd for Ed Lika and Brandon Hubschman. And talk about it. I know it's always fun to play in your backyard, right? Yeah, it was, you know, a great weekend, uh, like three days in a row. Uh, I got a little sore at the end, unfortunately. Uh, thanks, you know, for, guy, for you guys, you know, for organizing such a great event. Huge shout out, you know, to Polo Trace, to uh, our, you know, president and vice president. Thanks for coming uh, today, guys. Uh, thanks, Brenda, for playing. And uh, thanks to my uh, fiance, Adriana. I love you. Very Thank good. You. Sounds very good. He wanted to know, he asked me, does he get a raise now? He gets paid a little extra? Yeah. 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 Oh, there you go, man. Okay, Brandon, uh, let's talk about the tournament here. I, I know you're in the area also. you got a lot of friends and family. We see you at all the tournaments, but it's always good to be here on a championship Sunday. Yeah, uh, first championship Sunday for me. Nice having to drive just 20 minutes for tournament. Uh, thanks for another great one, as always. The book one was great. This one as well. Uh, I wanted to say thank you to Selkirk, uh, uh, my fiance, uh, my wife Taylor, and then oh <laughs> <laughs> um, all the mothers out, the, uh, mothers out there. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Uh, Taylor's over there cracking up there. So you got it right, though. You corrected it. It's just, yeah. Girlfriend one time like two months ago. That's skipping yeah, well, me back. Oh, you skipped a step. Girlfriend to fiance to wife. Not, not still a wife. There, there you go, right? All right. I'm making progress. All right. Sounds good. Let's let's get the silver medals. We'll have your checks here in a few minutes as so I process them. We appreciate you. Thanks everybody for coming out. Have a big round of applause for our gold medal and silver medalist here, men's doubles final. We'll get some pictures over here, guys, and we'll start our champion singles pro. Okay, stay with us. Our next event will be senior men's singles, Chad Flynn against Mark Paulus coming up here on Championship Court 1. Stay with us. Question. What do you need most when you're on the court? Is it stability? Breathability? Comfort? Or support? Well, now it doesn't have to be either or. Footwear designed by pickleball players for pickleball players. Introducing the Striker Pro V by Tyrol. Available at TyrolPickleball.com.
Okay, the nightcap here on Mother's Day. We've got the senior men's singles championship for gold. Mark Pallas against Chad Flynn. Chad Flynn, an NPL player, part of the new National Pickleball League, which we look forward to beginning June 1st. Uh, Pallas, you, you got to figure, Mark, he, he's been a sensational, consistent singles player. Got to be the favorite coming in. He took the main draw championship. Uh, Flynn has been very impressive. He came back through the back to face Pallas here today. Yeah, don't let that word senior fool you. These guys can absolutely wear it out on the singles court. Both these guys have good energy, good focus. Both have nice passing ground strokes. Pallas is the more experienced player for sure, uh, but there's a reason that Flynn is in the gold medal match. Yeah, he's got the wheels. We saw that in doubles. Uh, Mark Pallas, he's got some prowess. This is a former All-American tennis player from South Carolina. And he has brought those skills to the singles court in pickleball. Pallas checking that the feet already. He's, he's a warrior, though. I've seen him finish matches where it looks like you think he's going to go down. He just keeps coming. Love that mentality. Look at Flynn. Wow. He will make you play extra balls. Big fist pump from Chad. Oh, he's also got those new sketcher shoes on. Those look fantastic, even from far away. Uh, he's moving great on court. Good start for Chad. And you look at him from up here. He doesn't look like he should be playing in the uh, seniors, does he? He's got all that hair coming out from underneath the, the hat. He's the thin. He looks <laughs> like a young version of Mike Forrester's dad <laughs> coming off the beach with that <laughs> shaggy right, right. look. <laughs> Gotta love it though, man. His energy, you said it, his energy is really good. It's its contagious and, you know, Palace is a totally different personality. A little more, I would say, stoic in his demeanor, but very focused individual. You know, really a lot of experience on the court in singles. And bringing the heat with that serve. Up 3-1 early here in the first. It's a tough serve. Why does it make it so difficult to return there, Scott? I think he's downwind right now. And uh, on top of that, it may not be as obvious from the camera, but he, he puts a lot of top spin and power on that serve. It comes in kind of low. Mark got a pretty good look at it there, but side out for Flynn. That's lucky Lee Rosenthal over there blocking our view <laughs> of the <laughs> scoreboard. So I don't know if you can I'll see over there. I'll shoot him a text 3-1. 1-4-1, I believe. We tried to go behind him again. Two four, and even the speed of Flynn is not going to catch up to that one. Good to have the seniors out here. Unfortunately, the women's singles championship had to be canceled. Nobler injured late yesterday. Nice pass there by Palace. So. Uh, Another gold to Hurricane Black. She won with Krista Getcheva in women's pro doubles as well. We talked about Flynn playing in the NPL. That schedule begins June 3rd in Dallas. Really looking for, forward to this. NPL brought to you by Chicken and Pickle. Yeah, Dallas is a hotbed for pickleball. It's no wonder that they're starting that in Dallas, and uh, I had a chance to practice with the NPL group from Boca, the Boca Raton um, group. That Picklers. The Picklers. Uh, we pr practiced, Megan Hall and I practiced with them on a Saturday. They got 16 of their players 
uh, to come and meet at one spot. So they're obviously very committed and dedicated to this team. And it was fun. They were a great group and played for about four hours. So they're taking it serious. And I'm How are they looking? Yeah, they look <laughs> good. I mean, uh, we were all under the age of 50 that they, they brought in. So that was actually good for them. We, we you know, the young crowd played played them. But, uh, yeah, they're going to be ready. Carl Foster, team owner, and Rick Redimer. Lucky Lee Rosenthal will be playing in the NPL as well. Yeah, he's he's a great player too. Yeah. He doesn't get enough credit. He plays a lot of rec games, but doesn't play as many tournaments. He's usually helping run the tournaments. Uh, but yeah, a great player. Flynn was praying for win there to knock it down. Seven two. Trying to flick that into the kitchen from deep behind the baseline into the win. That's hazardous. It's <laughs> when we can have it. 8-2, Palace on a run. Oh, got what he wanted. He's upset with himself. There's that self-talk you often see in these high-level players. I'm sure that starts at a young age in tennis. You know, they, they learn to talk to themselves a little bit between points. And it continues when they get home. Take it from me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a point after a little drought offensively for Flynn. He's finally starting to get something going. Let's see if he can get back-to-back -back points. Just wide, he does. A 4 8. No, oh, gorgeous into the corner, perfectly placed. That's a great shot there from Flynn as he's showcasing what he can do on that backhand side. Back to win three. Right on the corner line. This time, Palace is staring down, thinking, are you kidding me? So four consecutive for Flynn. Keeping his footing now. important he doesn't give up any points on this next offensive series for Palace. He's got to keep this game close. Eight six. A lot of pace on that ball from Palace. Uh, you mentioned the wind behind him, but he re can really strike the ball. Yeah, I think that's one of his better attributes, the power that he possesses with that paddle tech. Uh, nicely played by Chad Flynn. Yeah, Flynn really finding his groove. He took his second hand off of that back end that time, he was stretching out a little bit. He needed to get a little more reach. Really effective shot for him, and he was able to win that rally. Can't it's find the corner that time. Yeah, it's the second time he's gone for that same shot, and he's just behind it a little bit. He's got to really torque on that ball, get his core involved, and he's stubborn. He's going for it. That's a tough serve to contend with into the body. And we've got a game point here in the first. Number of points off of his serve for Palace as he takes it 11-6. We'll go to the second here in the senior men's singles championship.
Welcome back. Thanks for tuning in here inside World Pickleball on YouTube. Uh, third annual Delray Beach Pickleball Open. Our finale here, Mark Pallas looking for gold. Taking the first 11 to 6 over Chad Flynn. An entertaining first. The power of Pallas, the mobility of Flynn. Playing it. At a palace here, which is the Delray Beach Tennis and Pickleball Center. Three championship courts, 27 courts on the grounds. World famous home of the ATP Delray Beach Tennis Tour Open. Palace Hustle got himself in position. A couple of side outs to begin the second game. Lynn likes to take that two-handed backhand down the line straight. He doesn't really cross over his body as much as I thought he might. I'm sure he has that shot, but he's really driving a lot of those straight. Palace going behind. Flynn, who had darted back to the center of the court. Well, that shows you Palace's IQ on the court. He saw the hustle from Flynn getting back to the middle, but unlike tennis, you don't have as much time to recover like you would think. So he ended up out of position. Palace put so much pressure on you with that deep pace. One, one. Well, that's a better return there, Flynn. Upset, jumping up and down. Flynn's definitely kept this competitive, but even in game one and now bleeding into game two, he, he's just got some unforced errors that are giving an opportunity for Palace to kind of extend his lead. Even though it's just 1-1, one, one, you can kind of feel that Palace is in control of these points. Oh, nicely done, Flynn. As soon as I said that, he <laughs> proved me wrong. But I'd like to see him do that more. I'd like to see him hit a shot and kind of move in towards the kitchen a little bit more, putting a little more pressure. Appears to be an advantage early here in the second for Flynn to have the wind at his back. measuring hitting into the wind now and passes him there three to one is wide. One three. First point off of the serve of the second for Palace. He got multiple in that first game. That's too good right there from Palace. He's closing the the gap, and then he just cuts those angles off. He's picked up on the fact that Flynn likes to drive down the line, so he's really committing hard to that side. I'd like to see Flynn switch that up a little bit and at least make him respect that cross-court shot. Good return deep down the middle. We are tied at three. 
Well, and Ari, that's, you kind of said it, that's another way for Flint to cut off, to um, neutralize the angles and the, and the roles that Palace can create from hitting out to the corners. If you go right down the middle, he has to hit a little bit better shot on those and, and you, can, you can cut those off. So I wonder if that's something that we're going to continue to see from Flynn. Flynn's first point off of his serve. And there's a second. They're bringing some more pace, aided by the breeze behind them. It's the first time today that you've mentioned something and then it went <laughs> in the favor of the guy that you mentioned. That's good to know. <laughs> Things have turned around up here in the booth. Yeah, I'm one for ten. Is that <laughs> it? <laughs> He's just got to keep this lead. Oh, he baited him. Good cross by Palace. But see, that's what I was referring to. He gave Palace that angle out wide, and guess what he did? He burned him back across his body. If he puts that shot more in the middle, he can cut those angles off a little bit easier and not have to deal with that. That's a, that's a tough shot to deal with. Oh, boy. I, that's, I'm not sure. So my angle is not always the best up here, but... Close. Four or five. Goes Too behind good. him with the volley. But you're right, he's really anticipating that backhand down the line. Yeah, I think Flynn, in order to hold on to game two and keep this lead, he's got to mix things up. He can't be predictable. Palace has a high a IQ on the pickleball court. You have to get creative with these type of players and not let them get comfortable with your patterns. Five all. Good exchange there up the middle. Yeah, again, we saw him go right at the body of Palace, which was a smart move. He just couldn't finish, but I like that strategy coming from him. So Palace, his first lead of the second, 6-5. Yeah, there's the cross, and he pulled it off. Yeah, and I think, if nothing else, it just makes Palace have to think a little more about where you're going to hit that ball, and, and maybe has, he, he's going to hesitate a little. If you can predict where you're opponent's going to be hitting the ball before they hit it it's it becomes a one-dimensional game and and that, so I like that he's mixing that up now oh that's a nice volley behind Flynn looked like Flynn's shot was going to be effective Scott yeah I really thought he got him on that but <laughs> that backhand strong Loose mistakes from Flynn. 7-5. Right on the line. Yeah, that's a risky shot, but I like it. Oh, sensational volley. Well, now we're seeing why Palace is in the driver's seat. Those shots he's got are just dangerous. So timeout Flynn. Trailing 8-5. Yeah, Palace just taking a seat for 60 seconds. You know, you earn that right when you play well and take the lead. You know, he's, he started out down 3-0, and now he's found himself up 8-5. Good players stay in games. Great players finish games. And I, I think we're seeing Mark Palace just show his – veteran play out here on championship court here in game two he 
you know, he wasn't playing his best in the beginning, but he's really dialed it in. And I think he's just a tough guy to play. He, he He's very deceiving to play against. You know, he doesn't have a lot of weaknesses. 8-5. Jumped open just a tad, so Flynn does get the side out. Looking for a run here. Deep. Returns the favor. So a good crowd on hand here at the Delray Beach and Tennis Center Stadium Court. Good stretch and coverage. Yeah, I thought Flynn had an opportunity there to close that point earlier, and he didn't take advantage of it. He kind of just pushed the ball back over, and then Palace is like, all right, I'm, I'm going to finish it here. Uh, he stuck that one a couple times. This one about an inch out. One thing I'm noticing about Flynn's backhand, it's it's real flat, which is good and bad. I mean, that that didn't miss by much, but he doesn't generate a ton of top spin. He's hitting those real flat, but it's been effective for him so far. It's been a good weapon. That was a good one. Yeah, that was definitely a good one there. Five nine, hanging around. Then three. It's a good setup there for Mark Palace as he dropped that ball into the kitchen, forcing Flynn to come up and make a perfect shot, which he did not. Alice, two points away from gold. Oh, Flynn, opportunistic. Two golds apiece for uh, Hurricane Tyra Black and Martin Emmerich today. Alice doesn't miss that one often. Still a window here for Flynn to make his move. Almost got there. <laughs> He's blaming the shoe. <laughs> <laughs> Did he hit his shoe? Maybe his paddle hit his shoe and he came in to get it. Pulled that wide and we do have a match point for Mark Pallas. Yeah, he's made fairly quick work of these games. Um, they're definitely competitive points, but you you can see um, 
Mark Pallas has a little bit more experience on the singles court. He's been around a long time. Um, he doesn't play a ton of tournaments, but the ones he does play, he always seems to find the finals and uh, puts himself in a good good spot to win some cash and a gold medal. Oh, beating down the line there, the two-hander. <laughs> Chad Flynn's like, oh, finally. Yeah. You know, it's at 10-6, I finally got one of those. Hasn't stuck one of those since the first game. Palace then was cutting off that opportunity. So timeout taken by Flynn there. I don't know if that was Flynn or, or Palace. Did you, did you see it was – I couldn't tell, but – I couldn't tell. I mean, Flynn just hit a winner, so I would figure he would want to keep that momentum going, but he's probably tired. So it looked like it was Flynn. Got the serve back at 6-10. He's stuck around, as you mentioned, Stod, Scotty, but had difficulty stringing together multiple points. Yeah, I mean, you can see when you lose a game, 11-6 first game, and you're coming back and you're right in that same situation, you know, 10-6. You've got, you know, some good rallies and you've won some and lost some. Uh, you nailed it. You've got to put multiple points together, and it's, it's all about momentum. If you get one point side out, one point side out, and then multiple side outs without a point, it's it's hard to create your own energy and, and momentum. But if he can get two in a row out of this timeout, you know, he'll make this thing a, a game where he can do that. But, again, you, you know, you give that right back, it's, it's tough. It's tough to continue to fight. And staying loose. And a gorgeous pass to wrap up goal. And now we get the big handshake. So 11 6, 11 6. Yeah, just Mark too Pallas. good. Yeah, too good. So uh, we will send it down to the master of the events, Carl Foster. All right, the grand finale, we saved the best for last. Our Champions Pro, the senior level, first time in major tournament history that senior pros are getting equal prize money with the regular pros. So we're setting a trend here to give respect to our pioneers that really started this game and have been playing pickleball for quite some time. And so we're, we're happy to be involved with that. We also run the National Pickleball League uh, with six pro teams getting ready to start up in June. And uh, Chad is playing in that MPL League. We run the Boca Raton Picklers. He's not on our team, so but that's uh, it's good to see you. There are a lot of... A lot of the NPL players were represented here this week, uh, all different teams playing in the tournament, so we, we appreciate that. And uh, Mark Paulus, we've got to get you. How come you're not playing in the league this year? Work, so i got to work. Uh, you got to, you got to, you're still working for a living? Yes, sir. <laughs> right. well, FedEx paying the bills. Yeah, right. Congratulations. Well, let's talk to Chad first. Chad came down from Minnesota, so I know you're getting ready for the NPL too, but how did you enjoy playing singles out here this week? I loved it. Uh, great facility. I mean, amazing tournament. And I just wanted to get to this, this spot, and that was my goal. And... I really appreciate it. So you also played doubles in the tournament too, didn't you? I did, yeah. Uh, uh, we did okay. We did. <laughs> we did okay means you didn't get a medal, all right? Uh, Mark Paulus just talked about it. Did you, you play any doubles this week as well? I did not. I did not. You Sing saved it all for the singles. Yeah, single specialist for Chad. <laughs> yeah. right. You saved it well. You had a good tournament. You went undefeated in, in the singles draw, so congratulations and thanks for playing. Thank you. Thanks for having us. And, you know, thanks for coming, uh, you know, the, putting on this event and obviously the equal prize money. So thank you. Okay, let's have uh, a silver medal from our from Mike from Tyro, our official shoe company. Great shoes. I play in them myself. So if you need some good pickleball, made for pickleball shoes, Tyro is your place to stop. You might have a few pairs left on the way out. Our gold medal from our presenting sponsor, Kim, and thanks to Baptist Health and their trainers here all week taking care of all the hydration problems and the injuries. So great partners, Baptist Health here in uh, 
South Florida. So they are the kings out there taking care of it. With all this heat, we had a, a few people that were a little dehydrated this week. So congratulations to them. Thanks to our broadcast crew. They'll be signing off here shortly. Scott Golden and Ari Chinook up there, our broadcast team, all our volunteers this week. You can't do it without them. Uh, Lee Rosenthal, my co-tournament director, he actually played a couple days. He was, how many IVs do you have this week? Two. Only two IVs, but he made it through. So, the, the, so thanks a lot to everybody, our staff, our operations team right now, and the city of Delray Beach most of all. So thank you, everybody, watching, and uh, have a great pickleball day, everybody. Well, thank you so much, Carl, and great work for the entire event. And what a few days it was here at the third annual Delray Beach Pickleball Open. Presented by Foster Events Group, Create, Manage, and Deliver, and they really did. Carl Foster, we want to thank Carl Foster, Tournament Director, April Prize Tournament Operations, Lee Rosenthal, Tournament Partner, George Dalmasetti, VP of Expo Village, Joel Brand, Director of Operations, Adam Bricker, VP Social Media, and Robin Warner, the Director of Volunteers. Producer Jack Waller, and my partner today, Scott Golden. Great job, Scott. I'm Ari Shanock saying so long from the third annual Delray Beach Pickleball Open.